it. <clears throat> okay, so we are Omen. Yeah, I usually play Omen Isn't... as much as I can. In one way. Yeah, I'll you might want to sit as, as close to the edge of the wall as you can, though. Because, like, the closer it gets to the edge of the wall, the more effective the one way is. Got it. You mean for the smoke? Yeah, because, like, he's, yeah. he's sending the one way, like, close to, like, to, like, um, that edge. Like, the, if he sits, sits it all the way out, out wide, then, like, it's a really, then, like, it's, it's more effective. Yeah, true. Oops. What the heck was that? Did I yep. actually invite you? <laughs> Did I mean to do that? Ignore that. Um, I'll, I'll leave then. No, 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 I was trying to, like, change the, the volume, and I actually clicked your name. <laughs> okay. So I want to pause here, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, what, what are you thinking so far? Um, I, I, I mean, I was just thinking, don't know any, I, I like to use at least one smoke off the bat, I knew the raise was going to peak. A main, so I figured I could just. I, I was thinking, let me just give him a one way, and then I'll just peek cat for more information. Okay, so far a yep. good idea. All right, so I like the thinking. I like the one way idea. I like how we're thinking about our ways. Okay, so we see what someone tiles. We could peek this over a jet. Well, maybe not. Now no, she's engaged with some Okay, yeah. so we choose to fight this. We choose to fight this. Okay. Well, maybe not. Just check information. Okay, that's good too. But now, okay, let's go back because uh, at some point the Saifu dies. We see the Sage. She's in tiles. The Vase is yep. pushing up. She's killed the guy top mid. She clears top mid. Now top mid is no longer a concern. And now she's pushing T-spawn. Alright, so now we generally know that the, the whole enemy team, all four people, are either tiles, B-lobby, or garage. Yep. Okay. So let me pause here and then let me ask you with that information in mind, what would you want to do? Uh I think I could I was I th probably still hold this angle just because um otherwise like my team has my team is comp closing on them, I guess from the two sides. The one place they could exit through is into mid. So I, I guess it would be helpful to just hold this and maybe not commit because, you know, four of them could come out and kill me, but just keep watching mid to make sure they don't come this way because then they know, then they're in just the spots that you mentioned. They're basically just in a third of the map at that point. The other thing I could do, I guess, is rotate towards my team towards B, but I feel like that gives up some of the, the <clears throat> map control on mid. Yeah. Okay. So you have the idea. You want to keep, keep mid control, but we know that there's only three places that enemy can be. And yep. I mean, basically, I what I'm like, thinking, oh, yeah, smoke one of them. Yeah, exactly. Well, so what I'm thinking as a controller right now is that I can use one of my smokes to shut down one of those angles. Right? I can choose to shut down B garage, so it makes it really hard for them to push from garage yep. into B. Or I can choose to shut down mid, and like I, I can smoke off tiles, for example, right? And it makes yep. it really hard for them to push from tiles to mid. That's true. I guess I could have smoked tiles and walked up, or I mean, I could have smoked it and just stayed where I was, or yeah, smoke garage, smoke the entrance into B, and then just that relieves some of it on my team. So then we can just watch other parts better. Yeah, I, I do think I, I don't use my smokes enough to help other sites. That's something I always try to do better. So I guess I probably should have just smoked earlier here. Yeah, I would. I would probably choose to smoke like right now, like. Yep. This probably not gonna be a better time to smoke than than now, because what I'm expecting to happen is that the best course of action for the enemy team in this situation is for them to like push somewhere, probably B garage ACP, like before yep. the rays can get high value off this flank. Because the longer yep. that they take, yep. the longer they stay in this contain, the harder it is that they're gonna be able to get in, get back any sort of map control, and more likely that your team is automatically gonna win. Yeah, I don't think I. I mean, when I'm playing. Like, I don't, I think, I do notice that sometimes I don't, I don't check the minimap enough. Like, I don't, I think I knew the Cypher died, but I don't think at this point I realized the Raze was doing a full flank through their spawn. So, and she didn't call it, the Raze didn't call it in the comms. So I think something also I just need to do is stay more aware of yeah. what the teammates are doing. And 
Just like while I'm in, maybe while I'm behind cover, just quickly look and then before I peek out again. Yeah, exactly. You can't always rely on your team to come out everything that they're doing. Like, hey, I killed Cypher. Hey, I'm pushing T-spawn. Hey, I cleared top mid. I mean, those are all great comps to have, but not everybody's going to be communicating right. like that. Yep, makes sense. So, yeah, you have the idea that you have to rely on your own awareness, your own game sense, like you yourself looking at the minimap, yourself giving so give yourself like a couple of seconds of pauses between like here for example you're watching towels but you don't necessarily have to like hard watch it 24 7 you can like hide behind cover for like a second or two peek the mini map and then go back to watching it so that you can like maintain your your awareness level and be like constantly updated about what's happening on the map what's changing and then based on that i can make a play make a decision or do something about that right all right. Makes so, sense. yep. So now we've just discussed that we should probably use our smoke to to further contain the enemy and make it really hard for them to to go anywhere. And don't give don't really give them an option to either go mid or go garage. Instead, of give them just one option. So, one option yep. is that you can choose to smoke garage, and then just by that, they'll be more likely to go somewhere else or best case scenario they stay behind that smoke and then your team gets like a ton more map control a ton more time wasted off the clock etc yeah i think i yep yeah, that makes sense i probably <clears throat> knowing all that i probably would smoke off mid just to funnel them into garage because more of my team is watching that but i guess either it could work yeah sure yeah so if you were to smoke garage then i would stay where you are in mid and yep. like be prepared for them to push tiles and try to set up your crossfire with jet. Alternatively, if you choose to smoke off mid, then I would push from this position and expect them not like like abuse the smoke that's going to be in tiles so that you set up a really deadly crossfire like deep in mid. So actually, let's go to a map so I can demonstrate. Okay, so this is ascent. And we have a raise who is about to push T spawn. We are uh, Omen inside Cubby. Why is this purple? Can I change color? Okay, let's go to white. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so a raise pushing T spawn. We are Omen on cats with a jet bottom mid. We have a, a Sova wherever and a Killjoy wherever. And then the rest of the team is going to be B Garage, B Lobby, or Tiles. Yep. Okay. So if we choose to smoke off mid, smoking off uh, like this, so yep. that our jet can look this way, and then we can position really aggressively this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the crossfire. Yeah. So it's like a really strong crossfire that really, like, if they decide to push through this, it's like, no way that they can kill you and Jet at the same time. And most likely that multiple people will die if they try to do that. Yep. Okay. And then... Uh, so what I would actually expect is that... Because you're smoking mid, they're less likely to go through mid. And instead, they're going to go through garage. So yep. you could even consider smoke mid. And then position yourself, like, let's say here. Just to, like, hear what happens in garage and hear what happens in B-lobby. Depending on what you hear or don't hear, you may decide to uh, rotate rotate through market ACP to reinforce this. So now you have yep. three people watching garage to make it really hard for them to push the garage while Jet can solo play off the smoke however she likes. Yep. Makes sense. I... I, I'm always wary about setting up, I don't know, I mean, I know I'm in silver, so there's not everyone, we're not very good in this elo. I'm always wary about trying to set up crosshairs with people, because I'm never, I'm not sure if they're always paying attention, but, I mean, I could, I could calm with the jet, or I could do the other play, which is smoke, but then just play, like, where you have it, it's not so much a crossfire, it's still two people watching the angle. Yeah, but, I would yeah. say as a combination of two things, ideally, yes, you would come, but not everyone will listen, or not everyone will be paying attention if you do, even if you do come. But they might not understand like how to crossfire correctly, but you can ensure that crossfires happen like yep, based yep. on what you see Jet doing, right? So if you see Jet bottom mid looking at the smoke, 
then you can also set the other side, this here, this side, whichever, and then also look the opposite angle of the smoke. If That's you right. see that Jet is no longer mid, she runs away and gives up the crossfire. Now you have to be really careful in this spot, for example, where you're in a one and done basically, or in this spot, for example, where you're almost in a one and done. Like there's like very low escape. Yep. Yep. So for example, if Jet were to leave mid, let's say Jet rotates to market because they're like, oh, Omen's got mid already. I'm just gonna rotate to market and then help my team three stack in garage. Then what you should do is that you also rotate. You were originally here, you you rotate to where the jet was. So now you play a, a safer position in the mid, watching your smoke, while Jet does the other alternative, which is three stack in garage. Yep, makes sense. So just have to keep playing off of how the teammates are moving too. Right, exactly. So in the, in the absence of communication and coordination, you have to rely on yourself to provide that team play yep. about like what the team is doing and then how you can adapt to it. Okay, yep. and then other thing too is that you have your flash. Actually, you have to, yeah, you did buy your flash, yeah. So ideally, you would be where the enemy goes. If they are, let's say, uh, not the map, let's say clear this say throw smoke here and then you you expect them to go garage because that's what i would expect them to do then i would ideally want to go market mm -hmm. and if they push through then you flash and then you peek yep right and then Makes save sense, yeah. the, the more passive angle playing like this jet passive kind of watching a smoke to someone else who doesn't have a flash yep okay um, so, that makes sense. Yeah, so we have these two options here. We can smoke garage or we can smoke mid. Based on these, whatever we smoke, we <clears throat> we can choose to play off the smoke if we expect him to push, although I expect most most people to not want to push through smokes. So knowing that, I would actually go smoke one angle and go the other angle. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. I guess they could also rotate through their T spawn if they wanted to, but maybe that's more unlikely, and then the rays would see them early. So that's maybe not that. Yeah, that's easy to deal with. Yeah. So actually, there is a another another variable which is the rays pushing through T spawn. So this puts a timer on our decision making process. Yep. yep. Where like or our, our a timer in our play where like we could smoke mid, or we could smoke garage, and then I don't know, we we play here, we will play market, but Based on what happens to our rays, if our rays pushes, 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 and gets to like here, and then like nothing happens, right? That means for sure all the enemy is inside garage, yep. or for sure all the enemy is inside in yeah. in link or tiles and is about to push out. Yep. So based on what happens to our rays, if she makes contact, doesn't make contact, what where she ends up, and like th those kind of variables, like. That should dictate what you should do. So that you might no longer stay in market. Now you immediately rotate out because you think they're going to be tiles because you haven't heard anything in garage and Raze has already made it to be lobby. Or Raze has already made contact with somebody and started a gunfight. Therefore, we should no longer just sit passively waiting in market. Now we should consider pushing up. Let's say you push up to here, right outside of garage, and you decide to, I'm going to flash this way and push out, push into garage, so I can get into the fight, instead of waiting for my raise to, to die. Yep, yep. Makes sense, yeah. I do I, I do sometimes feel, I, I think it's just because I play someone with smokes, which are just so useful, I do feel like I don't play as aggressive enough sometimes, which is also something I try to think about. Like, sometimes you just have to go, especially on attack, but <laughs> even on defense. I think I tend to bias towards staying a little more back and before committing, but... It's situational, but sometimes, yeah. I mean, this is a good example of like where I should be willing to move up aggressively. Also, it's pistol, but in general, move up aggressively, flash, and so on. Yeah, so I just wanted to introduce you to the, these various concepts and these yep. various timings so that it's fine if you're sitting back backside, you're, you're fine, you're just sitting passively in market or whatever, or sitting in mid, but you need to have a reason for doing that. Yeah. And if your team is like already making an aggressive play while you're still playing passive, then there's some coordination issue yep yeah. and i'm not helping them yeah. right all right so 
So we have outlined the options. Let's go back to the video. Yeah, I don't remember when I smoke, but we'll see. Or if I even do. Another alternative could be, if you want to be really greedy, is that you save your smoke until your team asks for one. Yep. Like let's say like you want to be you want to smoke as late as possible so that as when your killjoy like says hey there there's like there's a bunch of people in the garage like then you can like smoke then the main, that, yeah, yeah. that'll be like the highest possible value yeah but it, then it's greedy like but, you yeah said. but it is greedy because you don't have to, no idea yeah so I was checking top mid there but I didn't yeah. spike down another thing here is that you want to be standing still when he shoots. Yep, especially at this distance, yeah. Your shots are missing, not because your crosshair is off, but because you keep moving while you're shooting. Okay. And secondly is that you shouldn't worry too much about yourself getting hits. At least not initially, because the first person who makes contact by now is Jet. So right yep. there, they're focused on the Jet. So you could probably take like a second or two of like standing still easy shots before you have to worry about dodging something. Now they start shooting you, but now they're, now they're focused on the, the silver. Right down, B. I also just fear dropping down. Right now, you you should have, up. Mm -hmm. you should just stay stay uh, on the the catwalk. So right now you have three different angles. You have the left side of this with the jet. You have the right side of this with Silva, and you have yourself on a slowly elevated position on cat. Yeah. So automatically, like with you guys picking these three di different angles, like slightly different angles, at different times, like makes it really difficult for an enemy to deal with because they can't rely on the crosshair placement on any one, any single spot. Yeah, I think, in my mind, I think I just wanted to get closer, but I didn't want to just walk down the stairs to get closer, so I jumped off, but maybe I should have just held it and not, like, the distance is okay. Yeah, I would say just focus on peeking off your off your, your teammates here. Yep. So yep. whenever Jet peeks out, you peek out. Whenever Sobe peeks out, you peek out. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, I'm not beat. yeah. Now by dropping down here, you and Sovo are stacked up on the exact same angle. Base. Yep. Reloading. Never mind. Here's One off. enemy remaining. Good job, guys. Alright. I... What happened to you, Silver? Did you die? Oh, you did. Okay, let's see. I'm buying. Let's see, do you save the pistol here? I usually buy a second round. If that's the case, then you should give your pistol to Silva. Oh, because he... Yeah, because he bought one. So think about team economy. If you see yep. your teammate buying a pistol when you have a free pistol available, then give it to him. Yeah, I mean, this is one where I think we all should have bought together, but we didn't. Shadows traveling. Careful. I I was not expecting. I didn't realize you could jump over. Shadows I don't know if she got. You can. Careful. So that's just me not knowing the map. Yeah. You can also hear the the jump sounds. So right there, like. Oh yeah, that, yeah, I did. Yeah. That kind of thud. That was him like landing on the barrel on the high ground. Careful. Mm. Careful. I mean, I get you, you want to hold it one way. It's unfortunate you get hit. You got forced into 2v1. It's also yep. unfortunate that your raise is like completely unaware of all this that's happening. Or well, maybe she's she's focused on like closing the door, I guess. Or not. I'm not sure what she's doing. Yeah. I think she. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, she was cat. Maybe it would have taken her too long to rotate over, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I should have. I mean, now I know. Like from now on, I know that you can't. People can jump that. So I was trying to pay attention for that since I played the game. Yeah, probably I would say is that maybe play further from the corner so that because you know that they they're on an eco round and they're only have pistols. You generally want to play it at a range advantage because your yep, yep. your specter or whatever gun that you have it's going to be better than any pistol at, at mid to yep. long range, except maybe a deagle. Yeah. That's probably only a good place to say here. So. Yeah, not too much more on that one. Let me do it. And this was around, like, yeah, I, ideally, I, I think it's good to 
buy on round two, but I forced this one. Going out. Out last one. So, nice so we see three people, three people in mid. All four, all four mid. Now you just push this. Down, They're mid. mid going to be. You can also get the orb. Okay, we can forget the orb. Yeah, I. Yeah. Omen's still mid. Yeah. Probably could have caught him there. I don't know why I didn't shoot him. I guess you were waiting for a second person. I think you should have taken your time with that shot. Okay. Omens. Like, you see him completely unaware of positioning and walking. You can just, like, take your time, line up the easy shot. I dinked him. Here you kind of panicked a little bit. You can also could just, like, ADS and gone for, like, a 2 Yeah, I should have ADS at that range, especially with the Spectre. Spike That's down, a good point. Mid. One enemy remaining. Here we gotta help our Killjoy ACP. But that's not necessarily push to the smoke, I, I wouldn't do that. Hey. Like, this is a little bit risky because, uh... Spike down, mid. One enemy. With this last person here, especially with Reno, like... He could've been in that corner. He could've been yeah. in one of these corners, and then, like, killed, killed you, or killed the Killjoy, or whatever, and, like, dismissed all. Like, Reno is, like, the best... Like, the worst, the worst case for having... The enemy team like clutch, right? She's like the most yep. clutchable agent in the game because of her yeah. dismiss. Yeah, I could have. Yeah, I could have flashed one way to push him, or I could have just waited. I just wanted to support the killjoy, but yeah, there probably would have been remaining. All I would do, I would, I would either stay inside the smoke or just wait on the other side of the smoke for our silver to push together. Make sure to grab vandals. Yeah. And I mean, and also, I I could have also just played contact off of the. Killjoy. Like if Reyna yeah. was there, we could have yeah. just waited and then just shot after. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I would just like, for example, just sit inside the smoke, then wait for either if the Reyna's here, then she's gonna enter the smoke and then one woman you if she wins or doesn't win, whatever your team will will know exactly where she is and then have a perfect crossbow lined up. Or if the Reyna is playing like in one of these corners and then kills the Killjoy, then you can immediately pop out of the smoke and then force the trade. But if you if you force me peek this in like this, nobody's gonna be able to trade you out. Nobody's in position to trade you. Yep. Make sure and Reyna can just off. dismiss. Yeah, yeah. Here. Okay, now you know the whole area is clear. Grab that off, grab that off. That. I don't know why I actually checked the cubby there, but whatever. This. Me and Reyna wasn't there. Thank you. you should ask your Killjoy for a drop, or tell your Killjoy to drop somebody. Yeah. I have a buy Killjoy. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Right. Always keep the economy even. Yep. I like that you're pressing tab. You're keeping track of like what your team is buying, what the economy is like. And it's you see. Yeah, and I try to keep coming. track of ultimates on both teams too. Okay, that's a good idea. Always good. Maximize your awareness. Okay, so we see that the enemy team is pretty broke, and the only people who can buy is a jet and the sage. So automatically, I'm kind of thinking that. They should save, so I'm expecting an eco round. Or worst case, they force buy with like specters or something. Yep. Shadows. Okay, let me pause here. Who has the guns? So Jet has an op watching top mid. And Sova has a Ares. Everyone else has Vandals. Okay. And we we're choosing to smoke top mid. Let me ask you why. Yeah, I I like I think I've just found it to be a good default of sorts when I play Ascent on gun rounds, just because it, it it lets me, I guess I feel a little better. I feel like I can play more aggressively towards tiles, and if I don't see anyone tiles, sometimes I'll peek out a little bit from there. Um, I did, I maybe I shouldn't have, I'm thinking now, because the jet is opping, so probably smoking that off. There's no way they have an op this round, so maybe I should have just left it, because if someone did peek there, the jet... Could have would have had a better chance of killing them. Yeah, but this, the smoke is basically yeah. straight up bad because yeah because you're smoking off your jet. Your jet yeah. is already like aggressively holding that angle with an op, and then if any anybody in the enemy team like peeks her, the jet will most likely win that duel. Yeah. So yeah. instead of like because when you think of like smokes, right, you want to smoke up areas to force the enemies to go somewhere else, but in this case, you want the enemies to go top mid. Yeah, so you, yeah. you, you actually want to funnel sense. them to go top mid, if possible. Like, you want them to go into your team's ops as much as possible. 
Yeah. So yeah, by smoking top mid, you tell your team, you, you tell the enemy team that hey, don't go top mid, and now your jet is like, well, now I'm kind of useless watching the smoke. Anything. I'm, I'm not yep. watching anything, right? Now she has to like find a way to reposition to maybe watch towels, or maybe she aggressively pushes to mid or something to find a better angle. But probably mid is like her best angle when you kind of just smoke it off already. It looks like someone was there too. Cover your Careful. Sage is so they bots. So at least the sage bots, and you know they have two guns, and then let's see what happens. Uh, tiles. There were two people there who peeked. Me. The two people mid. One is dead. So Omen is mid. Cover going just, out. I just smoked it off just to have sage some prevent them from pushing it. Like, sage is a it. main. We only have to watch this until the jet peaks. So now she peaked. Now we don't have to watch this anymore. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So this is a redundant angle. It's A, yep. guys. It's A. Jojo, you can run. It's not necessarily A. We should probably push mid to help us over. We should definitely help push Spot mid to help us. Now it's too late. Yes. Definitely too late. It's so, it's going yeah. back to this. I think she has spike, guys. Watching A main is fun because you know that the Sage is A main. And well, there's likely a second teammate to go with her because uh, your raise died. So the enemy team would think, oh, I need to go A main to at least get this gun, and then I might consider pushing to A. So with at least two, or likely two people A main, and then the Omen was somewhere spotted mid. He could be somewhere, we're not sure yet. Watching A main is fine. Just that when the jet is watching of an op, now there's no point in us watching this, yeah, at least yeah. not from this angle, because the jet is going to make first contact before like anybody shows up in our crosshair at this angle. Yeah. And if I mean if someone kills her, that I can't trade them anyways. Right, so. exactly. So now you're better off served like doing something in mid, making sure that they don't rotate from top mid or whatever to tiles or bottom mid, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I should be probably going back to cat watching top mid. Here. Yeah, so Sova killed one Here. mid. Go, Jay, you can run. You did hear one in lobby. We're not sure which direction they're headed. And then I'm also looking at the mid-map to see like, okay, well Sobe was originally holding tiles on the opposite side of the smoke. But now he's decided to push through the smoke. You see this? The vision cone right now that he is pushing through the smoke. He has view of like almost all of cat. And he's slowly pushing, slowly pushing. Now he's about to, he's peeking top mid. And he's peeking somebody, getting into an engagement. Yep. So when we see things like this, like our team is playing aggressively, we want to play aggressively too. We want to join any potential possible fight that might happen yep. instead of like holding this non-angle basically. Yeah, I'm not holding One enemy control. remaining. And then, yeah, as soon as like he gets to the fight, we run one over there. As soon as we hear spike spike down, we run one over there. Yep. Spike down mid. Like a little too long. Yeah. Yeah, but now we're and too I, late. I knew the cypher was top mid here, but yeah, it was too late. Okay. So let me pause here. Let me ask you, what are you thinking? Um, so the spike was down top mid. The spike is basically down where the cypher is. Yep. So I, my first thought is peek. I mean, just peek to see if he's there. I, at least, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't do that because he probably will have time to have, have had time to readjust. But my first thought probably would have been like, just do like a quick peek to see if he's there to get info. He's either going down mid which I, the most un, he's probably not going to go down mid. He's either probably going to go back to A main or go through spawn to B. So okay. I think my thinking is check top mid if he's not there. Keep watching it for a little bit, and then if, and then maybe just pull back and just watch the cross to B. Okay. Through, like if he runs through spawn, and then assume my teammates will be able to cover him if he goes to A. Okay. Yeah, makes perfect sense. So generally, you do want to get information about where the last person is going, but. There's some trade-offs here. One is that if you peek him, he give you give him a chance to kill you. And right, the second right. thing is that you also give your position away. You tell him that, hey, I'm on cat. So you can't really push down mid unless you kill me on cat. So yep. right now I think because you have the element of surprise that they don't he doesn't necessarily know that you're cat, you could just like hide cubby, for example, and yep. watch him cross through mid. Whether he crosses to tiles or he crosses to bottom mid. Yep. And then if he does either of those things, you call it out to your team, or you get a free shot, whatever, and then you call it to your team. And alternatively, um, you can, like, for example, sit Cubby, and if he runs anywhere, he's you're, you're, you're going to hear it. 
if he runs to mid, you're gonna hear it. If he runs to a lobby, you're gonna That's hear true. it. Yeah. So you don't even necessarily have to pick him. Just by you staying here and then listening and then coming to your team about which direction he's going, or, or rather, um, which direction that you hear him going, then most of the time that's going to be good enough. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, just waiting in Cubby, and then every direction he could go, I'll hear <clears> it. <throat> uh, assuming he runs, which he probably would, so... Yeah. yeah. If he doesn't run, that means that he has to take significantly longer, so you can do, like, a mental calculation in your head to say, like, because I haven't heard anything, this is where he can possibly be by walking for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever. And it's just like a slowly expanding circle. Yeah. Right. All right. So, and the second thing is that um, well, I'm also paying attention to our teammates. Our teammates are running, rooting to CT spawn. What I would expect is that at least one of them, probably a jet, well, well maybe not because she's like low HP, I'll, at least yeah. somebody, we're not sure who, is probably going to peak mid. And they're probably going to peak top mid. Yep. And as soon as that happens, we want to swing to force that peak to become a 2v1. If the, if the Cypher mm -hmm. is still top mid. So, right, so I could wait in Cubby to see if I hear anything. If I hear anything, tell the team. If I don't hear anything, swing with whoever comes to mid. Right, in exactly. In case it's still there. Yep. Exactly. That makes sense. All right, yeah, uh, so let's have it played out. Yeah. Sage always cool. carries Spike, so kill Sage, you have Spike. All right, so, so now Kill just picked up mid. Now it's pretty much I cleared. I, I think now, I guess now I wait in Cubby, which maybe I should have done earlier, but... No, now you should watch A main. There's no, here there's no point in watching Trade. Like there's no way that he could be, let's say, like right when the silver dies. It's like one or two, right? Sage wall. And then when your coach is picking top mid, now it's been like five seconds. And since we yeah. haven't heard anything, there's no way that Cypher could have made it to Tree or even Sites yet. Best case right, scenario. He couldn't have like, gone all the way around, yeah. Best case scenario, maybe he's at the orb. If you like start walking like immediately. I think the reason, I mean, I don't know if this is probably not the right reason. I think the reason I was holding here was I was like, well, if he goes to site, <clears throat> then I'll hear him planting and then I can just wait for my team and we can 3v1. But if he tries to clear a little more aggressively, I might surprise him. But mm, I don't, I'm not true. saying that's the right logic, but I think that's what went through my head. Because if I, if I hold the cross to A main, he might, it's more likely he checks it yeah. than if I'm out here. But. I don't well, know if it's the right answer to just be so passive. You don't have to hard commit to an angle. Like you can watch the cross from A main to site, but you can do it in a non-committed fashion. Yeah, and just I could even just pull back. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So like That's for true. example, make the angle tight as possible. Yep. So you just have a sliver so that if he runs by, you'll see him, but it would be very unlikely that he perfectly shoots you through that sliver, for example. Yep. And it only gives him or you a chance to shoot like one or two bullets max before either you or him like breaks line of sight. Yep, makes sense. But at least you like you gain information whether he crosses or not. Here we have no information. At all. Now it's yep. been about ten to fifteen seconds. I'm expecting that at this point he could be he must... at the a, a main like exit or entrance yeah. or whatever. He must just be walking there. Yeah, he could be walking onto site like right about now, and we won't actually know. Most likely going A, or could be running around to B. Thirty seconds left. Okay, now we know he's top mid. Right side. Yeah, he's going B. Here. We have nano swarms on. Going B? What do you mean? Right side. But the, yeah. the thirty bot. seconds left. Left. Oh, the bot. The bot must have. Right side. Hold on, some tiles. Yep. Okay. We have nano yeah, swarms on B. <laughs> So I probably should have just run straight to site because he wouldn't have had time to do anything else. Yeah. True. I don't know. I, th I would kind of think that he would be saving at this point, but it seems like he commits to it. And the Killjoy, unfortunately, was a little bit too committed. She had a molly, she had a setup, and then she just peeked him in the garage. <laughs> Instead, okay, she yeah, should have just played off her setup, but unfortunate. Yeah, so he's definitely on site now. He's going to okay. 10 seconds left. Oh, now he's burning time. He's burning time. Let me fight this. Also true. Should have just, should have just pushed their CT and waited for the plan. Ten. Like, hey, as soon as we see him, like, because he doesn't have time to plant anymore, now we just focus on staying alive. Seconds left. No, I guess. That's right. I guess I. I don't know. Maybe I was thinking he just like he could in theory have just 
run through stairs and plant it, but maybe it would have been really tight. Yeah, not with eight seconds, because it takes four seconds to plant. Okay. Yeah, probably so, so. Yeah, you actually gave him a, you gave him a chance to actually win it there. If he just killed you in the jet. Yeah, we both peaked him. Yeah. All right, as soon as the round. Okay, we're so, flash, but. Yeah, so on this one, the, no, just like the Rays asked me to flash this so he could just go aggro out. That's okay. why I, normally I wouldn't just do it without. But he said, yeah, can you flash this? So I flashed it for him. Makes sense. I think this type of flash is really strong when you have a teammate to push off of it, or several teammates to push off of it. Yep. The Rays is going to die, though. Good, 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 good. Or Tell the enemy team <laughs> has, has no sound. <laughs> I'm really surprised that Rays is not dead. Like they hear the satchels, like they must, yeah, they hear the landing, know. they must know that she's hitting on me. Good, 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 okay. good, good, good. Got me his position. Yeah, so. Okay, anyways, the smoke is way too late. Good, 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 good. The style smokes make sense. Let's right, go back so to this. So we have our, our jet, she's watching top mid with an op. We do a flash. Yeah, so I think I, I learned from my mistake, which is don't smoke top mid when you have an op. I was good, like, I'll good, smoke tiles and dead. They just don't push position. there. Yeah. Then when Ray's, then when the jet died, I said, oh, let me smoke top mid. But it looks like the Reina started pushing up mid off yeah. of that kill. Yeah, so that second smoke is basically like too late. Yeah, yeah the second smoke didn't do anything, yeah. Because we out. lost mid at that point. Oh, Pick this way now, because I'll be she's in contact with Sova. Now we go back to hiding. I would rotate around and just give us up. Okay. Yeah, so I know Cypher's A main. There's like two. Oh, Cypher, I guess he went back to top mid. And then there's like one or two more mid right okay. now. And then Omen's towards B. Yeah. So we did see Reyna was it she's barging down bottom mid with someone else. Up, I'm assuming yeah, it's Sage. Okay. And then Then we see Cypher in a lobby. He could be. Nope. He's going top mid. At this point we just give up a lobby. Now we basically need to figure out a way to play around our Sova. So either we peek cat aggressively with our Sova or we rotate around to to regroup for us over, or we go in some wild flank. Yeah, and I think I think we knew there were two mids, so that means they were probably going to push Silva. So I probably should have run back to help him as quickly as I can, or he should have. Ideally, he would have fallen back too, but maybe I should have rotated the respawn and gone over to him because Omen is on B, then the other three are mid. So yeah, I mean you have several options, and it's, I'm not yeah. saying it's it's a bad idea to play splits, or is a it's a, okay. always a good idea to to be grouped up. Like sometimes you do want to take multiple angles. Multiple angles is generally pretty strong when enemy team okay. like like can't deal with multiple angles, right? Yep. So yeah, and they did know where I was, but yeah, to, it still could have been fine to play here still. Yeah. So what I, I want to emphasize emphasize is just just that that you play off your Sova, regardless if you join him or if you play split with him. That playing off him meaning that you guys time your engagements together, so that. When a Silver is making contact with somebody, you push out and then make contact with that person, or ideally make the contact with that same person. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Three mid. Yeah, perfect. So like he's got a pick top mid. We're pushing out cats to try to um, take mid control off that pick. You see it right now. We quite don't want to put that. Unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I missed my shots, but I mean, I could have maybe just seen her and then pulled back. I don't know. I think maybe it was okay for me to take that shot. Cover going out. Oh, they're here. You hear two aim in? I'm closing this. And then open here. Reloading. You should communicate to your team everything you see. So get into the habit of like calming, being like a a, a cipher cam wherever you go. Yep. That constantly yeah. tells the team, your team, what's happening around you. Cover going out. Yeah, so I, automatically. I, yeah, go ahead. We, you know, we hear like two or three A main. So yeah. told the rest of the team. Right. Yeah. So based on the information you give to your team, your team can adjust and adapt. And then maybe they rotate early. Maybe they decide to push B. Maybe they decide to aggressively take bit control, yep. etc. But yep. they're only able to make... They're only going to be able to make those types of decisions accurately if you give them the, the information that you have. Yep. Okay. Oh, they're here. 
So here you automatically you hear at least two because there's one someone shooting and there's someone jumping. Yep. Reloading. Right now you're stuck if you raise, it's unfortunate. Now you hear smoke and you hear a flash. Or you see a flash. Yep. So you should tell your team, Omen smoked heaven and then Omen no flash. Yep. And then win on no, no one flash. Shadows. So that your team is like more likely to see it, think like yes, this is the A executed, we should rotate ACP, or we should we should play faster in whatever play that we're about to make. And yeah, uh like yeah, and also calming utility. So like important things like omen flash where they only have one of. And then yep. as soon as that flash is spent, like there's no secondary omen flash. So it makes it a lot easier for your team to rotate. Yep. So or well, not necessarily yeah, rotate but to, to, to retake. Yep. So, yeah. for example, what could happen in like a post-plant situation is that maybe it comes down to like a 2v2 or 1v1, whatever, with the omen. And knowing that the omen doesn't have a flash makes it significantly easier for your team to, to win that. Yep. As opposed to, oh, they have to worry that this omen might flash me, etc., whatever, or what do you tell the rain it has, etc., etc. Yep, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. I mean, the omen flash, yeah, like even the rain of flash, if she used one, if she uses a second, we should know that she has no flashes either. Yep. Yeah. So basically, calm things to your team. Act as a as a human psychic like king. Yeah. Okay. Sight. okay. You have an okay idea to like to smoke. That's a good idea. And then actually, we exclude flash before that. We should peek off that it flash. Didn't... You have the okay to to, to flash to slow down the push, but I would probably peek off the flash. Okay. I was just, or, I'm always worried with my omen flashes that, I mean, I could flash, someone could easily just dodge it and they could run in right after, and then, yeah, you know, it's a 50-50 at that point. That I was thinking, I, mean, I don't know if this is the right thinking or not, I was thinking, like, Raze is not, like, there's no one on site right now, so I don't want to get too aggressive by myself, because I could easily look into two, or, like, it could be a 2v1 or 3v1. So I was just thinking, how can I stall for my team to rotate? We should just smoke ASAP. Basically, as yeah, soon maybe, as you... Let's go back to like when you start hearing a bunch of sounds, and then yeah, I could have done it earlier with the footsteps. Yeah. As soon as you hear them budge to aim in, and then raise leave sights. Reloading. Even right here, I would consider I would probably smoke right after you. Smoke. Yeah, but as soon as you hear the omen smoke on heaven, I would just smoke yep. aim in. Or especially after his flash, yeah. Yeah, I did it a couple seconds too late. But if I smoked earlier, then I could have been watching the angle yeah. earlier. So now at this point, the smoke is kind of useless because the jet and the rain are already on site. Yep. Now the cypher is yeah. on site. The hunt begins. You could probably spend the cypher if you smoke. If you saw him on the minimap. Right here. Oh, okay. You see him on the map, so you know exactly where he is. So just like based yep. on where you are in the minimap, just like aim at the, I guess like aim through the minimap if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I think I mean I'm sure I probably I was probably not looking at the minimap at this point. Like I don't think in game I realized Cypher was there, but it's another reason to make sure I'm looking at the minimap. Yeah. Yeah. And when these sorts of like downtimes is try to look at the minimap more. Shadows. Yeah, like, like, uh, yeah. After you kill this guy, you're reloading, you're no longer looking at an, at an angle. Instead of look at the minimap so you can see what's going on. You see stage, you see Cypher. We're still yeah, looking yeah. At, an, at an angle, so just keep looking at the minimap. Yes. And now our, yep. our vision is blocked to the smoke, so now the only thing to look at is the minimap. Now yep. we see yep. Cypher, we see Reina. We could probably spam that Cypher right now. Yep, I was probably looking pretty close to him. Yeah, I knew he was there. I guess I should have. I knew he was there then. I think would have been crazy. By my sauna. So, probably the main thing is that if you just smoked earlier and then yeah. considered rotating slightly earlier so that you play a bit more split from your arrays instead of stacking on on the door, then that could have helped. Yep. Although, then again, they're Omen Smoked Heaven, so there's probably not a better place to go. Get out of my way! They're A, they're A. Yeah. Here, A. Don't just say that they're A, they're A, but. How Try it, yeah, count how many exactly. There's a difference yeah. between hearing one versus hearing three, or you hearing five. They're A, they're A. Yep. Get so, let's do a little exercise here, just to the full volume. 
actually pretty loud. And then let me ask you, if you were to come, how many were A? How many would you say? Time out. Get out of my way! They're A, they're A. Probably like three or four. Probably four. I'm giving it up. At least. Good. Yeah, four. So I would say at least four. A main. Yeah. And then. Like at the beginning of the round. Get out of my way! But here I'm healing about two, maybe three. They're A, they're A. Here I'm healing yeah. four. At that point, yeah. I would smoke A main ASAP. Even if there's no one on site to help bit, just to stall their push a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because you just want to stall. I mean, you could okay. you can smoke A main and then play Watch the Cross, or you can. Because you're kind of in between where you can choose to watch the cross or actually you can choose to like push through mid and then try to flank behind them. Flank them. I see, I see, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Another alternative is that because you're inside cubby, you can flash from cubby through a main and that will flash like the whole team Probably inside a main. Yeah, so that will stall them a lot. That's yeah, a good point. Yeah, exactly. And that will stall them a lot. Yeah. On top of the smoke that's going to be sitting a main. Yep, that makes sense. Good. But right now we're kind of we're not really doing anything. This slash is gonna be too late. Late, yeah. Cover going out. Okay, yeah, I smoke also too late. My smoke was very cheap though. Spike planted. Oh, 113 right uh, there. We're gonna wait too early. So it makes sense we want a quick door. If I want to hide, yep, we reload. We can't peek out yet though, because we don't have anyone with us to peek out. So we have our Sova, he's ulting, and our Killjoy is still at least 2 seconds behind. And actually she decides to to use her ult. So unfortunately we peeked out for ourselves. Watch out, heaven, 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 heaven. Okay. I mean, so everything was like a couple seconds too slow and then I peeked yeah. out too early. or wasn't careful enough with that peek, yeah. So I would say, um, I mean, you're making the right decisions, it's just that you're too slow with them. So, how to rectify it? Um, try to, I mean, I mean, it's not necessarily because of like, I guess like hesitation, but it's just more so of like, you have the right idea, it's just not at the right time. Yeah, I think it's just being slow to process. I mean, I mean, there's always other stuff yeah. that I think I'm thinking about during a game. So I think it's just, I mean, going through this is already super helpful. I mean, next time I play the game, I just have to think about, like, just spend more attention thinking about this a couple yeah. of times. Okay, so I won't leave as a bullet points, but what I would yeah. bring up is that consider looking more if or when you hear, like, three or four plus enemies pushing down the site. Right, so if you hear them pushing a main, then you can just like toss down utility to slow them down. Meanwhile, you push mid and get behind them, for example. Yep. So yeah, just give that as like, yeah. yeah. It's something that to try. Like, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Oh. Cover going out. So here I smoke top mid because we didn't have anyone watching it when the round started. Reloading. Uh, enemy spotted mid. Enemy spotted mid. Uh, Epicurely. One pick with our rays. That smoke is kind of pointless because they're already spread out in mid. Yep. That's true. Enemy spotted. Here we're walking to the reason. Spike okay. down now we're, mid. Now we decide to force mid. I know exactly where they are. Betrayed. They're gonna go away, they're gonna go away. I'll pick up the app. You will not kill my allies! Fish for Killjoy. Somewhere mid, so I know they're mid. Good kill. One enemy remaining. Spike down killjoy. mid. Yeah, I don't know, I don't yeah, know why I went to go look in garden. Yeah, I should have stayed with her, you're right. I think you, cause uh, cause your raise died in Down right here. mid. Let's see, she dies to an old I right know she dies to a jet. Yeah, but then I yeah, but then I killed the jet after. Yeah, I probably should have realized I didn't even yeah. check it. But yeah, yeah. Maybe just something I didn't realize in the game. Yeah. You will not 
Kill my allies. Resurrect yeah, I should have played closer. Yeah, just watching this, I realized he was not playing. Oh, oh, okay. One enemy remaining. Yeah, I just left her to take Spike one down one. mid. You guys have bomb. Let's be on the safe wall. Okay, let me Spike down pause mid. here. You guys have And then, let me ask you, what are you thinking? Uh, I wasn't, so I wasn't sure where the bomb was, so he just said spike down. I, I don't think... I'm trying to remember, like, when did the, which side of the, I mean, I don't remember which side of the wall the Reina died on or where she died, so I wasn't, I think my first thought was, I probably assumed that she died on our side of the wall, so we must have had the spike, like, the sage wall must have been behind the spike, the spike yep. been towards us, so I, what I probably should have done, I think, is peaked, like, just found an angle to just maybe crossfire, maybe moved up to market and tried to crossfire with my killjoy towards the spike, because it's just one sage left, okay. and then I think, Sage is probably, I mean, Sage is, e most likely she's mid, or she could be going through Garden, you know, slash Cat towards our spawn, but most likely she's still mid. Okay. Yeah. All makes sense. So, if we assume that a Killjoy stays in Pizza, where do we want to play? Or, where do we want to play, what do we want to do? Uh, I guess I... I was first thinking I could, um, I mean, thinking now, maybe teleport into market so I can have kind of a crossfire with her. Okay. Um, but, like, the other thing I was thinking about is I want to watch the spike, so I could also just jiggle peek around this corner towards where the spike is to see if I see the sage. Okay. The, d the downside of that, I guess, is I'm not really playing off my killjoy, but at least that way I would have the information on if she got the spike or not or maybe where she was going. Yeah, okay, makes sense. And I think what I ended up doing is, I mean, I didn't jiggle peek, but I think I just looked mid. I didn't see anything. And then I, I, I wasn't, I didn't see the spike, so I wasn't super sure where the spike was. So I think I just missed, lost some awareness there. Okay. So, yeah, we're not totally sure where the spike is. We can only assume that it's down on our side. And then based on what a killjoy does, if she sits here, we should probably also just sit here and set up a crossfire and assume that the bomb is on this, on this side. And yeah, we could jiggle to gain information, but... So what I'm trying to think of is like, where do we want to stand to set up a cluster with a Killjoy? We could sit market, that's a great idea. We could stay here as well, that's also a decent yep. idea. But whichever we choose, we also have to be careful about which angles that we're exposed to. So for example, yep. if we sit market, we're exposed to doors. So if for whatever reason that Sage like walks through garage, then you could have, have to worry about garage, let's say 20 seconds later. Or if... if uh, you, if she, if Sage like pushes through cat to tree to CT spawn, twenty to twenty five right. seconds later, then you could maybe have to worry about CT spawn. Yep. Or if you set CT spawn here, then yeah, likewise, like all those things like still still remain, right? But another thing too is two things I'm thinking of is that one, you have a smoke. You can use the smoke to help isolate angles, so that for yeah. example, you smoke CT spawn. Now it's very unlikely that Sage will be pushing through that smoke. Now you can focus on Cross the crossfire or focus on peaking mid or something like that. The yep. second thing I'm thinking is that there's an op basically sitting at your feet. I would just pick that up immediately and start abusing it and like mm -hmm. hold a really tight angle on, on mid, for example, or hold a really tight angle on from market into CT spawn or something like that. Yeah, I, I think I'm sure at this point I forgot there was an op there, but yeah, that, that definitely makes sense as it's the best thing to watch just one angle. Yep. Okay, so we play it. Okay, let's be on the same actually walled. Yeah, so I looked briefly. I didn't see the bomb. The teammate said it's behind. Like, yeah, people are saying it's behind the wall. I wasn't sure if they meant it's on the other side of the wall or. So I think maybe I should have asked someone to clarify. But yeah, I wasn't sure if the bomb was on our side or if it was on. If it because it was on the other side of the wall, the sage could have picked it up and just run anywhere. Right. But so yeah. if they're saying that it's behind it, guys, then mostly it means that whatever action that you're thinking of now we're doing now like you guys are thinking you're, you're sitting here camping th because you think that the bomb is on this side but yeah, your team but is, on... is saying something which implies that it's the opposite yep yeah so here i would i would probably just like start walking toward a or something to gain information or right. we'll possibly cut off a rotation and, and while we're doing that also ensure that because that we're playing s split from our killjoy we want to Try not to take a one one with the sage, unless like if she like has a back three turn, then you should take the one one. But 
if she is like clearing angles appropriately and she like she peeks you at the same time that you peek her then if you can try not to commit to that duel or yeah. when you're holding an angle like you're holding um her her cross in, through tree or something from tree to the door then try not to hold a super wide angle instead try to hold it really tight so that you have just the information that she crosses or yeah. you get one or two shots off and that's it and that's basically all you need and I can just wait for the killjoy. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay, so we start walking oh, somewhere. Okay, walk to a B. Thirty seconds left. Here, I think I was thinking I would hear Last her if she was standing. running onto B site, okay. and then if she was flanking guard, and I would be able to watch it. I'm not too sure what I'm doing now since I saw her mid. But... Yeah, enough oh, I, oh, I hear her here. Perfect. Nice. Pick up the up. ACP. Yes, perfect. And then give it to your jet. Oh. Or someone. Yep, I forget. I gave it to someone, yeah. Yeah, I guess in the end that worked out okay, but. I will be their yeah. Nightmare. yeah, so far that process is good. This smoke is bad. Don't take this. You can smoke yeah, after she takes a shot. Yeah, same thing. But not before. Okay, so she's yep. not here when you when main. Call it to your team. I'm gonna rotate A just in case. So that you silver give me more confident in flotation. I'm like right here, you hear two people aim in. Yep, yeah, I hear that, yep. I think I was just mentally so focused on like mid and my smokes that I tuned that out, but I mean, I just have to remember to listen to those sound cues. That makes sense. I'm gonna rotate A just in now case. Now you hear two on top mid. Yep. Huge. Bombs top mid. So now. I would like force mid control as soon as possible. Spike down mid. I'm pushing your jet, pushing your main. Switch on top. One enemy remaining. Yeah. Last guy is probably top mid. Okay, last guy is good garage. The whole enemy team is just doing much their own their own things. Silver man. You you say something? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah. Ears still ringing. Makes sense. Let's play, dude. So all, right. all worked out. All right. Yeah, so I'm the only one on A again. I wonder if I remember that. Cover going out. Yeah, again, we don't want to smoke this when our team is hopping. Top Cover going out. Yeah, I keep doing that. If we blow both our smokes like this, then we need to force mid control. Yeah, Killjoy, we don't talk about that so over there. And then we can't force mid control way. if we're just sitting cat. We need to be like actively deep inside mid. Well, like, I should be pushing into mid, like up cat or somewhere in the middle. Okay. Right, so we should be like, for example, jet is like. Peeking into B lobby ready. So, yep. if we want to play off for a jet, we should basically be inside that smoke. That's Third, yeah, yeah. inside tiles. Alternatively, yep. if we want to like go the opposite, the other part of mid, if we want to go like up top mid, then we'll like push it up all the way up, like maybe outside of a smoke or even inside of a smoke, and yep. try to like listen for information, see if we hear anything, don't hear anything, whatever. Yeah, I think I yeah I smoked and then I guess I think I'm always worried people will just peek out of the smokes anyway, so I'm never super you, comfortable. Yeah. But then yeah, you just, but... you'll see them first. Yep. So yep. you'll be able to shoot first. Yep. I was thinking first about ulting because I know they're all on B, but yeah, so tiny tiny detail here is that is that uh, you you're worried about top men. Because like you didn't really do much of your, with your smokes, you were just sitting cat the whole time. There's three of them. Right. Okay. If, if I pushed one of the smokes, if I pushed towards top mid, I would know there was no one there. If I pushed towards B main, I would be there with the team helping right. them. So you could have already like gone top mid and heard that nobody's there, or you could have already like pushed through uh, tiles to help your jet. Yep. Yeah. I could okay. have been closer to do this flash. I ended up not doing it. Let's. I think it's a good idea, actually. To do the flash? Yes, because... Okay. Someone could have still been in there, yeah. Not because that someone could be there, but because specifically because your team is about to push garage. So... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you don't have anything to look at right now, let's say, like, right above three of here, you don't have anything to look at, like, at all. Because the jet is on the other side of the smoke, and, like, unless the jet dies, and then five seconds later, they, they start running past the jet, like the jet's body to the tiles that you're not going to be in a gunfight for at least 
five seconds. Most likely yep. ten plus ten seconds or more. Yeah, yeah. So you have the luxury of like just look at the mini map, think about what you want to do with your utility or where you want to rotate to or whatever, whatever. Yeah. I think and I was then, worried because we only I only saw three of them. I mean now I now I see that all four of them were there, but I at the time I didn't know where one of them was, but maybe I should have just guessed that they were most likely with their team. Yeah. So right. what, yeah, one thing you could do is that you can communicate to your team, say, hey, I'm gonna flash garage, push garage. Yep, yep. The other thing you could do is that when you see them, like right here, I see the killjoy walking to her or running to a garage, whatever. Left. And now all three of the teammates are dropping down, pushing toward into garage. I would do this do the flash ACP yep. to yep, help yep. your team out. Yeah, I'm not but sure why I didn't do it. Oh. And then they unfortunately, all yeah, there. unfortunately they killed two. Now you lost garage control. Now this yeah, flash is like way too late because Solar yep, has yep. given up garage completely. Yep. And you've also told the enemy team exactly where you are. Oh, I'm gonna need some like help on it. I want to TP. No. They're gonna hear that hopefully and not go here. Got some sight. Oh no man, they're just gonna force two one. One enemy remaining. Spike down. This one. Almost. Good, Good try. 20. My Good bad. try, yeah, can't was... win every, every 1v1. Yeah, close in the end, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I... Yeah, if I was there to help the team, it wouldn't have become a 1v2, so... Yeah, I think yeah. this all is kind of a waste, because if they played it more intelligently, they would hear that you're te teleporting uh, back of B-sites, and they would just go A. Yep, yep, so, yeah. So even if, like, you have the super god aim to win a 1v2 in that kind of situation, a better team would just not give you the opportunity to clutch. Yeah, I think, I mean, I didn't say this out loud, but I think what I was hoping is that the Sova would fall back. So, like, I would have time to alt over and then, but, mm. I mean, I, I didn't communicate that, so it's irrelevant. But, yeah, I mean, regardless, I probably should have just either ran back through spawn or continued holding, pushing slowly through main. Yeah, I would just continue pushing slowly through main because right now you have them contained inside garage. And then depending on whether you make contact or the solar makes contact, then the, the other person should, like, box him in further. Yep. And they also know where I am, so, yeah. They know where both of us are, I guess, at this point, so. Yeah, that's true. Last player standing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but the main thing that I want is that you just kind of too slow with your decisions. Ahead, yep. Dog. She yep. also hit me 120. Let's yep. start this party. I don't. I don't remember if I got the one. Both of us. I'm just thinking now. Both Race and I were both there. One of them probably should have just walked up. A main. Somebody should have walked up B main. No, sorry. No, both Race and I were peaked A main together through my one way at yeah. the start of the round. So we probably could have been more aggressive there since there were two of us there. Mm, I guess so. The problem is that the one way when you try to push through it acts as a one way for the enemy team. That's true. Yeah. So if if someone's like sitting in your lobby, then you're probably gonna die. Yep. True. Yeah. So I, I mean, after that, I just came back to cat. cat. Sage slowed it, so I assume Sage is top mid. Looks like Rain is tiles. Let's see. No, Sage is tiles. Oh, she's tiles. Yeah, I guess you. Keep Based on the angle that the the orb okay. landed, she's definitely yeah. tiles. Okay, okay. Now Rain is also tiles based on her flash. Yep. At this point, there's no point smoking top mid. They're already in mid. Yep, it's unlikely someone so, is there. Even if someone was there, they're not gonna be afraid to just push through your smoke. So what I would because, do is I would right, smoke right. Uh, bottom mid to help out your your jet and your Sova. So they can't push into bottom mid. Okay. Yeah, to make it hard for them to push through bottom mid. No, that's a good point. I think that, I think when I smoke, I don't think about, are they going to be afraid to push through my smoke anyways? And in this case, they wouldn't be because like they already have mid control, so they would just walk through it. Yeah. I think going B. Yeah. I hear one A. That's your raise. Yeah, I think I realized I that too. Our raise, sorry. Okay, we're at about... Yeah. After Rainer dies, we're peaking mid, see anybody's mid. Yeah. Nothing mid so far. Now we peak top mid. So at this point, 
I would say it's like pretty sure that nobody is mid. I mean, possibly somebody could be tiles, we have to be worried about that. Possibly somebody could be top mid, hiding your smoke, we do have to be worried about it. And possibly somebody could be like the refrigerator, like the right side of mid. That maybe they were hiding there the entire time. Maybe. Yep. Although I think it's like pretty unlikely. So yep. what I would do is that I would just like push up mid aggressively and then try to cut off rotations and gain more map control. So for example, I would sit outside of tiles and then... Okay, yeah. So, you're yeah. Th so push up mid to tiles, not like to top mid, but just go sit outside tiles somewhere. Yeah, I mean, you could also go top mid, but it's kind of a gamble that if they decide to go B, then you have a really long rotate to become useful. Yeah, and Raze is already over there anyway, so it doesn't add anything if I do it. Uh, I was I was thinking well, I can watch the rotation from here, which is, I think, why I didn't leave. But maybe I should have pushed up, because in case they went B, I'd be closer to help my team. In yeah, case. the thing is that this is, like, the first thing that they're going to see. When they're, when they're deci yep. deciding to rotate from B lobby to tiles to mid, like, cat is going to be the first thing that they see. Almost the entire time that they're rotating, they're going to be worried about cat. But the other angles of mid, they're going to be not necessarily be thinking about. They might check it once and then that's it. Or they're check in the middle of checking like multiple different angles. And then at any, any time, you could peek out from your angle and, and kill them, right? Yep. Yeah. Maybe that's just yeah. our raise, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, when you have mid control like this, it it feels like you have mid control that you haven't seen anyone yet that you should just abuse it and like take up aggressive positions in mid yep i think they're leaving you push like that's what, i mean that's what our raise is doing it looks like i just wasn't doing it yeah so yeah would you push tiles or simply sit outside of tiles i would sit outside tiles and then because like it's again it's about boxing the enemy team in we know that the enemy team or it's very extremely likely the enemy team is garage and B lobby. So the only rotation is through T spawn, which your raise would definitely hear, and it's a super long rotation as well. Or they rotate through tiles, in which case they deal with a potential cross area between you and the raise. Oh yeah, and also Cypher might also still have trips up, so that is true. So yeah, by by, by sitting cat this whole time is like it's pretty passive and I think they're leaving. It's gonna be like the first angle that they check. Yeah, so someone then I was gonna rotate B. the respawn to go to the team, but someone called they're leaving B, but then I decided to come back. Yeah. Oh. I'm not sure why I pulled back so much. One yeah, enemy they're remaining. Just too passive. Oh, Ray's yeah. like holding W. She's gonna get to a good fight like pretty soon. She's probably gonna go to T spawn, run into the jet, who's probably also T spawn. Okay, now she's in garage. Yeah, that definitely. I was way too passive there. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like the rational. Maybe this is not the right way to think about it, but in my mind, it's always like, well, if there's three of us staring there, why don't I just wait for them to push out instead of holding W? But I mean, if someone is pushing W, I should just go with them. That's the only way to do it. Hey, you want to do the... Let's see, how much money did you have? Thank you. Last Lockers. round in the half. Spend everything. Gun here. We keep nothing. I got money. Need something. 5200. Yeah, it was the last round. I think everyone got money, so... Okay. Basically, whenever it's last one, I'll always look for an excuse to get multiple ops. Hey, you want to do the multiple what? Multiple operators. Oh, okay. Like an op watching top mid, an op watching tiles, an op watching B, an op watching oh, and main. Just, and just right? put a gun at your floor. Yeah, right, and yeah, around. exactly. So like, you have an op, you take the first shot of the op, then you throw it away, and then you pick up the whatever gun you originally were planning to use. But just like the op is like so strong a defense that you have a good op op angle almost. Every everywhere you go, everywhere that that the attacking team wants to go. Are you afraid of other people picking up the guns? Uh, potentially yes. Yeah, like yeah. that's the only that's that's the only inhibition of buying an an extra operator or two on the on the defensive side, because like like on I've had it bite me in the butt when like they come back and get it later. I mean, you could uh, you can try to op in very safe locations. So, for example, like a heaven or like. CT spawn mid, where like 
even if you miss the, sh miss the shot and you die with the op, that they would have to like go all deep into your team's territory in order to pick up the op. Okay, that makes sense. Alternatively, you can like you can like take your shot and then when you decide to switch to the other gun, you do like this mini juggle where like you pick up a gun, you drop it, pick up the other gun, you drop it, pick up another gun, you drop it, like the Halo <laughs> the Halo style of like juggling the, the capture the flag. Yeah, like, okay, so, so like yeah, like throw the gun out of the map, that makes sense. Well you 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 keep juggling the gun farther and farther away from the enemy team. Yeah. So say for example if um uh, if you were cat for example and then you were opping tiles and then you took a shot and then they they tagged you for like several hits so like you're really scared to peek again so you're not gonna op again so then you take your op and then you juggle it with like your let's say you had like a phantom at your feet that you juggle it with your phantom to all the way to spawn or whatever like city spawn or you could have uh, you could drop their your phantom in like tree so that if you take your sh you take your shot at, at cat, then you want all the way to like seep spawn, drop it, then you go to tree, pick up your phantom, then you go back to watching cat. So unless nice. they they immediately push up cat like immediately, then most likely you'll still have time to like get back to watching cat with like a phantom or something. With and also the op like being deep inside CT spawn. Or or thrown off the map, whichever. Okay, well, there's a the tiny details, anyways, and it seems yeah, like you have money to do it. I'll but try it. Yeah. If you are given the opportunity to do it, like, abuse it as much as possible. Yep. Satchel out. I think I missed it. Race, up your race, up your race, up your race. Spike down wow. A. She's pushing you, pushing. Yeah, this time I remember this one. Damn, it's gonna hit on the final shots. I know exactly. <laughs> that was just, I think that was just some panicking. And, player standing. Yeah. I think my first reaction was like, oh, we got two kills. That's great. We should retreat. But the raise kept. I mean, I should have pushed up with the raise. I did a flash that was pretty good. I mean, I hit a good number of people with it. But then after that, I just was not sure where they were. And lost. Yeah. Just like. Um. Whenever you see your your team make an aggressive play, you just you just have to make an aggressive play with them. Yep. That's all I was say. Kind of, yeah. I'll say it's kind of phantom diff because like you could have spammed the jet out of the box of the phantom is a, a bit trickier than the vandal. Like I mean, like like. What's the difference? I mean, the penetration is the same, right? Penetration is the same, but I find that it's a little bit easier to spread through boxes and control it with like phantom. Like if they decide to peek out, then you can like spray transfers. It's a little bit harder than vandal, I think. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I'm not going to gloss too much about like. Yeah, the reason yeah. to do all, I guess, the jet here. I'm also concerned about, like, when this raise is, like, making a play, and she gets a double kill, and she's gonna push up after this. What we decide to do is that we're just gonna shoot at this, at nothing here. <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on through my head there. And the flash was great. Yeah, just I saw that, and I... Late. I think it's because, I think I assumed that my flash, I knew my flash was gonna hit them, I assumed everyone would have run to top mid or something, but... The jet, I guess she smartly just went to the left instead. I wasn't expecting it. And then, I mean, I think at that point my aim was, then I was just like too much, thinking about too much, and it was just bad. Yeah. But yeah. I know. I just, I think in those, I mean, that's just like, have to like calm down and slow down a little bit and hit your shots, which is those situations. Yeah. Yeah. But makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, the main thing, yeah, you're right. I should just have pushed that way earlier. I mean, I, I think, I don't think the race told me that she was going to go, but if she told me, I would have gone. But I mean, the, I think the moral of the story is, Teammates are not going to tell you everything, right? You just have to see what they're doing and play around that. Right, exactly. You have to anyways. like, you have to read your team's body language, so to speak, and yep. then based off that, make the the correct decision whether yep. to play aggressive or play passive. So things like uh, double satchel jump into, <clears throat> excuse me, to like a basil, like, and then followed by two kills, followed by pushing through smoke. Like these are all signs that. She wants to play aggressive as much as possible. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> Keep up. 
I, I forget if our team said they wanted to rush A or not, but we'll area. I heard the cypher cam. Yeah. You have a sage wall? The smoke is coming way too early. Yeah, that's what's oh, I don't think I, 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 I'm sure I didn't notice the sage wall or didn't hear it, so that's just bad. Reloading. Yeah, so I know where the sage is. Yeah, I know there's a sheriff somewhere. At this point, you guys should just consider rotating out. Yeah. That yeah, I, mean, so so much I also was people. like, I was not holding a good angle because the same thing as some of the previous rounds were like, if someone took a fight against myself, I wouldn't have been able to trade him anyway, so I wasn't doing anything useful there. Yeah. What I would have done here instead of backing out was was continue to fight with the jet. Is that a right move? Let's see. Okay, we break the wall. Team breaks the wall. We're just generally picking together. But now uh, our jet's running away, our uh, Kyojo's running away, now it's just us and our Sova, which are also stacked together on the same angle. So now everyone's backed out, except Sova. And your your jet is like having some binary language, like saying that, hey, I want to rotate. Yep. And the bomb was rotating. And then so. now she's pushing back into your main. Hey guys, let's rotate. And now you're. you're Actually, Raze is dead, so she, oh, she's coming. I guess she wants your team to to rotate. And the kill yeah, just, yeah. You know, so like, I guess it's um, your team not being on the same page. Like originally, it was yeah. actually Jet that was the first person who wanted to rotate, but because she saw that your whole team was still sitting a main, then she decided to commit to a main. But then at the same time, while she starts to commit, then you guys start to rotate out. Hey guys, so yeah. I think rotate just some quick. communication right, coordination guys, issue. Set for his team. Huge kill. There's someone T spawn. Attacker spawn. Uh, I don't think I expected mm. her to. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I think I just had. I mean, if I was watching the minimap, maybe I would have known. I didn't think she was so close. She yeah. must have just been hiding in the cubby, right? Because she killed the killjoy from behind. Yeah. I assume she was on the fart, so I just. Yeah. She was actually hiding in the cubby. I mean, I won't watch for that. Oh, bad. It's like fake B. Fake B, fake B. Generally, I would wow, still have three, two flashes, insane. even on eco rounds. Just Especially just instead of market. buying a, a two smokes, you mean? Yeah. Because, like, as a controller, your your primary job is to smoke. Even yep. though, like, it's eco round, you guys are probably gonna lose it, but the, the round becomes way more winnable. When you have like two to three smokes available, so for example, you can like use your smokes to help push mid, for example, especially in a set where mid control is really important. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was pistol runs always rough. So Last player standing. Enjoy the one v five. But we get the plant money, I guess. Jet didn't come we'll with focus us. Focus on it too much. Yep. I right, like. Let's play for real this time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna peek mid and get one tapped. Come on, come on, now. I got this fight. Rana's flashing out, eh? We need some balls. If your team decided to play slow here, I would actually have considered doing some sort of splits or like mm. looking away from your team. And Omen's like a great agent to lurk, like you, guys, you have all this like up like like solo potential yeah. of your, your flash, your TPs, your smokes, etc. Yeah, I'm never sure. I have trouble figuring out sometimes when I should lurk or not because yeah, because I yeah, because of all those things, he's good. But I also always want to make sure I'm ready to smoke for my team if we need to. Yeah, so, I mean, while you're looking, sure. you have a global smoke, right? So you just have to make sure that That's you're true. paying attention to the mini map and be aware of like when your team is about to push and then be able to smoke yep. for them across the map yep yeah so i mean yeah someone i probably could have been peeking mid here just helping Stage wall them in. i heard the wall this time that's good at least she broke the wall immediately the stage is really deep though she stayed, i mean i say the jet is really deep and, and nobody could want i'm lucky i think um decision to run away here 
the completely turn around is the wrong one. Because even just like even if Jet does not decides to not come in, as soon as this wall breaks, this jet is like fully exposed. Yep. So I should have been pushed up to help her. Yeah, in worst case scenario, I would expect this jet to like get into a gunfight, even if she decides to try to run to safety, that someone's gonna cut off this rotation. Like someone's like at heaven or yeah. someone's on site, or whatever. When Jet tries to run toward her team, and she accidentally gets into a gunfight that she has to take. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I'm thinking now too, like I, given how aggressive she's playing, I probably should have used a smoke. I think I could have smoked either Garden or Heaven, just used my one smoke and then just been ready to support her instead of leaving. Yeah, I just kind of left her. And she, oh, she dashed onto sight by herself and then the rays went after and... Yep. Yeah. So we didn't really go in together there. Well, I wouldn't focus too much about like utility about what you should smoke or not. Just the idea that you should like one is the awareness of like the sit the situation that your jet is in, and yep. the the decision that she's most likely to make, which is push in, or okay. even actually even whether she pushes in or not. I'm ex I'm expecting her to get into a fight, so based on that like that awareness fact, that I would decide, not even like. Whether I smoke or not, I would decide to be ready to play off my jet's contact. Yep, yep. So, yeah, so I should have been pushing towards A. Yeah, not so B. even if I wasn't a controller, what I would do is I'd position myself like close to this corner so I'd be ready to swing yep. out when she makes contact. Makes sense. Yeah, but yeah you died his own line. I want to really fault you for that. Your team just needs to check these angles. Okay, so, so now here we're. I Yep, go ahead. I was, no, yeah, I was just trying to lurk on this one just to mix it up, see if someone was going to push out. Okay, yeah. good idea. Spike down. I think, uh, so this is the first... Uh, let's see, what was the round before this? Okay, so it's... Yeah, it's... We lost the pistol round, we lost the second round. Now this is the first buy round. Right, so this is the first. It's our, it's our second. The this second. is round three, right? Let me just that one. No, yeah, this oh, is yeah. the fourth round. That's is what I was saying. Yeah, we lost the first yeah. three. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is actually the second buy round. So the first, the first buy round, you guys all stacked in your main, and then just kind of lost it. The second buy round, this is the second buy round, and then this is actually even the first default round. Yeah. So, um, what I'm thinking is that I would use this as a information tool not just about how the enemy team plays but how your team plays as well and how likely your team is able to win on a default round so yep. for example if you're you do your let's say this round you look a and you do your normal look maybe you find, get into like one whatever you, you push in the site you find someone don't find anyone anyone but then let's say your your whole team or I spread on the map, but then like 15 seconds later, they all group up to be garage and push B. So for example, that tells me yep. that they're less likely to stick it to a default and more likely to group up. Second scenario could be like they all split up and they all lose their bombing ones. So like two people go garage and they both die. Two people go mid and they both die. And then yep. you find yourself looking A by yourself in like a bombing found situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily bad just more so that we want to focus on the takeaway like gaining information from this round to help us in future rounds yep just to know so i can play around my team better right so say for example the next time that your team decides to quote unquote default you can adapt to how your team plays or adapt to how the enemy team plays so yeah not, not just about how the enemy team is like holding a side or what angles that they, they the whole thing they like to hold or what what angles they like to push whatever but also like just how how well your team is actually able to default and how it, your team is actually able to gain map control or gain information or whatever whatever yep makes sense okay yeah <clears throat> spike down b Die. So one minor thing, so here we decide to just sit a lobby. And I'm not sure if I agree with like 
holding a library but with this with this box because like if they were let's say let's say someone does decide to push a lobby and then they clear angles correctly one by one then what's going to happen is that they're actually going to see you before you see them if they like isolate angles That's correctly true. yeah because be, they can go further away from right it. exactly they can go further away from the box so if your goal was to watch a lobby then i would either choose to play more passively like say if you play further back from closer to t-spawn or better yet it's probably the best option is if you do like the bicycle jump to to yep. get to like what you're looking at straight ahead yep yep Yep. And if you're worried about making noise, there is a trick that you can do, a movement trick, where like you kind of like shift jump onto the box, like you full speed shift jump, mm -hmm. and then follow by a crouch. So you end up like crouch, crouch jumping onto the box, so that you jump into the box, but you don't make any noise. Oh, okay. So yeah, most of the time when, when you just do the normal crouch jump onto the box, they hear you jumping because because yep. of that, like you're, you're full sprinting followed by a jump, that always makes a noise, right? But if you execute it perfectly with like, I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's like you you shift jump, so to speak, followed by a crouch. Yeah, then, I've heard about yeah. this before. I've, I've never tried it, but I mean, it's some, I could probably just try it in a custom game, but yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, that's probably a better place to lurk because it's that's more of an off angle because it's height change and yeah. yeah, you have like more options basically. I mean, you have it's yep. a really strong off angle if you choose just to stay on this side, and you also have the option to just jump on top of uh, the the boxes there if you wanted to like peek a main and get a main control. Yep. And second thing too is that you'll be closer to sites, closer to cat, so that if you, you know, like if the, if someone's on cat and they rotate out whatever they go tree, you'll be able to hear that. Hear it quicker. Yeah, yeah. So you can get gain more and more information for your team. Okay. Spike down so, B. Right now, what I'm kind of doing, I'm just looking at the enemy because you're not actively holding an angle, and then maybe you have like a mental timer in your head that if you're worried about someone pushing a main, maybe you pick a main every five seconds or whatever, something like that. Where just keep a mental picture of like when someone might be pushing a main and in the meantime like look at the map see what's happening and see like okay we have two people pushing garage and then our bomb just died so now it's a big global global cue to the enemy team that yes the bomb is down B garage and they're more likely to rotate or make a play as soon as something like that happens and then the other fact too is that we have our jet aggressively pushing mid by herself. She's exposed to cats. She dies. Omen and whatever that MF was that ran a mid. So I hear the rain of mid still. I heard her reloading. Last player standing. Oh, did he hear you? Did you make a noise? Mid. When do I he picked Omen up mid? Whatever that MF was that ran a mid. Well, he just okay. happened to be top, picking top mid. Last mm. player standing. I wasn't ex I, I, I think I just yeah. forgot that someone could have. Like, I should have probably cleared that angle first, but I mean, it's. Yeah. I could have also flashed it, but I mean, I, I don't think I really knew where she was. Okay, I assumed she I would keep. Have, like, I didn't think she would keep pushing to top mid. I, yeah, at that point, I, I, didn't know either. I need to check okay. everything. So, we don't push into sight. We let them push. So, someone camp yeah. here. Someone camp here. Someone camp. There. Okay, so Raze is calling for the same kind of default uh, round. Except like, like let them push up, get at least one kill, and then we put Okay, push so this is the same round as, as the last, so but we just wait for pushes. Yeah. Usually a default in ascent would have like one B, one A, and then three people fighting for mid control, but yeah. here we I also I made the same problem, yeah. I should have I should have played up further on the ping or the raised ping, but I was just playing on the box, I think, because I was a little late to get out here. No, you shouldn't play on the ping because then you would make first contact and raise can't yep. trade you out. Right? If you if yep. you're standing where the ping is, you would actually see the entrance to A main. Oh really? Or, or, or okay, the exit okay. or whatever. Like with Oh enemy. it's not like a, it's not a big enough wall over there. Okay, so that's just yeah. So where you're okay. standing right now is the perfect crossfire or a perfect opportunity for you to play contact off 
of ways. Yeah. Oh, something I was wondering, like I always, I'm never sure if it's a, like, do I sit, like should I have my gun out where they would peek or should I have it facing in? Because I'm not sure how much the gun sticks out behind some of these boxes. Um, um, generally, you don't have to worry about it. Maybe if you have an ops, you have to worry about it. Okay, okay. Maybe if you have a phantom, you have to worry about it. But that's only if like they peek further away from the corner, which they would see you first, regardless if your gun sticks out or not. Okay, okay. That's good to know. I think that's why I was looking at the box, but yeah. The other thing too about looking directly at the box is that you can have your crosshair lined up so that when you do peek and you swing out, oh, yeah, your crosshair yeah. is already lined up pointing at Amin. Ah! Yep. Enemies <laughs> This guy should not have a knife. Oh, I remember, yeah. I think I remember getting annoyed at that one, but whatever. <laughs> the problem is that you, you panicked when when the, the Reynos showed up on your, on your, on your minimap. So you have to remember that the person who has to make first contact or should make first contact in this situation is the race. And the yep. person who ha has has to make second contact is you. So yeah, you shouldn't have moved. Yeah, yeah, regardless if like she shows up in your map or not, like shows up like this is like really aggressively shows up, like she's like really close to you, still you just, you have to wait for your race to like yep. make the first contact. Enemies yeah, I moved a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Spike down I mean, and I, I mean, and you know, she went for the knife, which is a troll, but I mean, whatever. She wanted yeah. the knife. I should have still played that properly. Okay, let's go six rounds. I mean, I think if. We're... Yeah, I think I was like, oh, if I didn't die. We might have been able to win that round, but I mean, whatever. It happens. Yeah, shit um, happens. You okay, Jay? Can I get Spike? Cover going out. We spent five minutes. Hopefully, make the play off of this. I wouldn't stay holding cat though. So the whole point of smoking bottom mid and then peeking cat is so that you can get mid control. So as soon as uh, let's see, one time you peek cat. I okay. Yep. Okay. No, go ahead. Sorry. So as soon as you you smoke bottom mid, you don't have to worry about bottom mid anymore. Now the only thing to worry about is cats. So here we peek cat, which in my opinion feels a little bit early because I want to, I probably want to wait for our jet to get closer first, to get more and more mid control, and then we possibly double peek with her or possibly double peek with someone else. But okay, we peek by ourselves, fine. Then we don't see anyone. Now we should push into mid and start taking mid control instead of sitting tiles. Right, that's okay, the, so the purpose of like peeking cat plus using a smoke for bottom mid. Is so that you can get mid control. Okay, so I should walk into mid and towards bottom mid, like towards my smoke? Yes. Either okay. towards your smoke or towards cat or something. Like with some, okay. I guess, like direction of like, well, I don't know what do you guys want to do. If you want to like take cat control you want to, or push cat or if you guys want to push mid or whatever. But yeah, I don't know if the, yeah, I don't know if we as a team had like a clear plan. But yeah, I, I see your point, which is I think I usually smoke it and then just watch cat because it helps me. It makes it less likely someone pushes up, you know, through the, like through mid and attacks. But yeah, I should. Yeah, we should use the smoke a little better. I should be using the smoke a little better there. Okay. Here we we just picking up for for an overly long period of time, and if we were really focus on holding cat, then if we have better angles, which we do, then we should use them, because let's say if I'm a I'm a defender, I'm a cat player, and I decide to peek out, right? Basically, tiles is giving me the first thing I look at when I peek out. So instead of like playing this uh, so-called like first angle, like common angle, like this is the first thing that a cat player is gonna see and check. Instead, we should play elsewhere in mid. We yeah, this is yeah. I see. Yeah. Like this is yeah. I'm just playing an on angle, but it's better to play an off angle here. Right. Exactly. She's gonna only. check the corner. So. What's your opinion on like holding it like that? as opposed to jiggling it because like i find that like if i hold that then i usually get clothesline really fast only like like this yeah, yeah, like I, I i i feel like when i do that like someone will just peek from cat and instantly close on me i'm not sure you might like close on me like i'm like, um, like instant headshot oh mm. i mean there's like pros and cons one is that like, everything has a trade-off where like here like you're kind of in the middle of the open, so that if someone swings on cat, you're very committed to that 1v1. This could be minimal escape. 
compared to um say if you peaked it tightly oh, you need to pick that you swung eh, like this like this is like pretty tight right so if someone like pushes cats or picks cats then you'll see them but you'll be very non-committed and the chances of you like instantly getting hit like this is like pretty slim makes sense uh, 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 it's like you'd rather hold a tighter angle than get the chance for the kill at the wide swing and it depends what your goal is like if your okay. goal is for for example in this situation it looks like his goal is just to watch cats and make sure no one pushes cats so you're just watching for information not necessarily to take a one v one and win the one v one then probably this angle would be better where like you're not too committed unless you're really confident that whoever peeks out you just kill them and you win it yeah, I Makes think sense. I think I was thinking just make sure no one pushes, but I, I still should have maybe gone into mid more to take up more space. I yeah. don't think I was thinking about pushing. But. I think taking an off angle in mid, watching Cat to accomplish the same thing, being safer yep. and also being in a better position to get the kill would be more of a better than sitting in tiles. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, Mingo, what are your thoughts on blowing both smokes on mid, like like right at the start of the round? Hmm. I would generally only do it if, like, I know for sure that the enemy team has an op, and I know for sure that they're gonna use that op somewhere in mid, and that we, we really, really want mid control this round. Yeah, because only only has two. Yeah, exactly. Because you only have two. Out, you have a different story. Generally, when you when you smoke mid, you want to use the smoke on either either bottom mid or cat. Right. The point of the smoke is to isolate angles. So in this scenario, we're smoking bottom mid so that we can isolate our volume one with the person on cat, or if, if someone is on cat. Likewise, if we smoke cats, we're, we're smoking cats so that we can isolate one we one with someone bottom mid. But if we just burn both smokes at the, at the start, then it's not really for isolating one we ones anymore. Now it's for aggressively taking mid control and the reason mostly to aggressively take mid control like that without even forcing an engagement in the first place is so that so you, you punish like like stacking too many operators in mid for example. And does that make sense? So for example, like if they um if they had let's say they had multiple operators, they had one operator on, on cat and they had an operator on bottom mid, then by you burning both smokes, you're aggressively take mid control and then that allows your team like say like let's say your your, your bottom mid smoke is, is like where it is right now then you have like at least three different angles that you can pop out of the smoke like left right as well as directly out of the smoke that it makes it really difficult for an operator let's say an operator is like sitting cd spawn or whatever watching bottom mid it makes it really difficult for that operator to like deal with three different angles that someone could swing from yeah, that's true. I, I guess if, and I mean, I, I never do this, but I always, I mean, I don't use my teleport really that much at a Zomen, but I could also go in the smoke teleport somewhere, and there's a lot of, I, I guess it's a good way to use it aggressively in that case. It gives you more ways to enter a choke point. Yeah. Are you exposed to, are you exposed to like, um, the, the CT mid area if you TP on top of the half wall? It depends where in mid. I mean, you'll probably be exposed to market if you TP top right, yeah. and you'll probably be exposed to pizza if you TP top left, but you won't be exposed to uh, bottom mid. Okay. What's your thoughts on that? Should he go for that here or no? Depends how much risk he wants to take. Generally, I would only do it if like you're really confident that that no one is playing bottom mid. Or that no one is playing like pizza, for example. Then you can TP top left. Like let's say, for example, you've you've read the enemy, or you you've seen their defense several times, and they really like to play bottom mid. They really ever play. Uh, I'm sorry. They re they most of the time they play CD spawn, and they really ever play like close bottom mid, for example. Then yeah, you can go for a play like that. Or like say if you had a teammate with you, that was your teammate was like inside the smoke, and then. When your teammate swings, you also TP at the same time, something like that. So it makes it difficult for if someone was there that they have to deal with two angles at the same time. Makes sense.
Also, as a note, like, uh, like, uh, like as a solo, sometimes all to do is I'll tell my omen to smoke deeper in, into bottom mid, like, and then I'll dart close, close behind that area, so we have a little bit more mid control. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that is something like you if can you have a stone team, you can calm that, like smoke a little bit deeper, like not past pizza, but into that choke, and tell them yeah. to dart close. So, I would I would actually tell them to use the dart first, so that it will check uh, close bottom mid. Then we will smoke CT spawn mid, so that when we decide to push to mid, now the only angles we have to check is pizza and market. Yep, that makes that actually makes more sense too. Yes, you know, I mean like your team has like great up, great utility to actually to mid control. Like you have a drone, you have a dart, you have raised boom bot. You can boom bot close like bottom mid. You can boom bot into pizza. You can t tell Killjoy, hey, just throw a molly into pizza, or just burn a molly, and that'll help clear it for us, right? And then you can just like isolate all these angles one at a time. And now, now there's only one angle to to, to worry about, which is like it. And then you guys can set up like a mid to B push or a mid to B split, where like two people go garage, three people go mid to B. Yeah, it looks like, I think, yeah, I think in this specific situation, I think we were playing more of a default, so I wasn't pushing as hard, but yeah, regardless, like, I think it's some, I mean, it's like, we should mix it up, right? Like, maybe next round, we should try something like that. Yeah. If we know they're not being super aggressive mid or things like that, yeah. Yeah, but like, that kind of coordination of, like, utility is, like, it's kind of hard to come by in solo queue, yep. that is more so for, like, scrims and actual teams, but you could try to yep. communicate it, but at least for now... In this scenario, we're just focus focusing on gaining information so that in a subsequent round, we can make a play. Yep, yep. I mean, a lot of the game, I, I mean, you're making me think, like, a lot of the game is just realizing how my teammates play and how the opponents play. Yeah. And just being able to, like, play around that, not even... Yeah, they might do something that's not, like, just being able to punish them instead of just doing what is strictly optimal every time. Yeah. Uh, that narrow peak hold, hold is honestly is honestly a really good tip. Honestly, like I get I get killed a lot by holding for the wide swing, and like I get killed by someone peeking close. Like I'll, I'll I'll be sure to use that myself. That's a good idea. Sure that. Right. Any more questions so far? Oh uh, nope, not not at this point. Need some notes, okay. She was gonna check the corner, so that's a sage's A. So now we decide to push mid, but now smoke's about to dissipate. Oh, <laughs> that was oh lucky timing. So it that... looks like the Arena pushed through my smoke then. Yeah. Yeah, she did, but how did the Vays not see that? Sage's A. Because, like, now we're deciding to push mid because our Vays has eyes on mid, except this tiny sliver where, Ra where yeah. Reina was standing. And uh, Reyna was just like completely oblivious, like not even paying attention to the, our race like running oh, top mid. <laughs> so that's pretty right, lucky so timing, but Which side are we yeah. very strange scenario. Smoke. No point in walking. Push yep. push well, now you can that's walk, but like, four. You guys yeah, are... I should just run up the middle, yeah, because they know that's where we are. Yeah. Five of us and three of them. Which side? You see, it's the vase. And then they know that you're mid because you killed the Reyna. So you want to, like, play fast off the smoke. Therefore, your raise is running. Therefore, you should also run. But when she starts walking, then you can walk. Push B, push B. I know exactly. 50 on Cypher. Please carry her. Close left on B. One tiny thing I like to do is that I know when I know that Cypher is, is about to although he's about to, his ult is about to go off. Oh, exactly. I'll pretend I'm going in one direction. Like say if I pretend I'm walking toward like or facing CT spawn, and then immediately turn to go market. Oh, yeah, because they'll assume that you're running in this. Right, because they see your your outlines like a pulse. Oh yeah, also something that's really rude that I discovered the hard way to the Cypher when I was playing Cypher is that if you run backwards, it looks like you're running forwards in a certain direction. If you run backwards, it looks like you're running forwards? Yeah, yeah, like I'm like if you're running if you're running backwards, then like when it takes the snapshot, it looks like you're running forwards in that direction, but in reality you're running backwards towards the other direction. 
Oh, okay, yeah. That's a good uh, tip to know. Yeah, it's probably, I mean, in general, I try. it's probably good to just jump or do something, because, I mean, he might just spray you down, you never know, so. Yeah. I'm pretty well, sure that's how our jet died. Just well, it's not about cool. that he's going to spray you down through smoke, it's about giving false information to the enemy yep. team. So, that's true. just, like, when the ult goes off, look in a direction that you don't want to go in, and then immediately go to the direction that you do want to go in. Just yep. to, like, throw them off, so that they only know the position you're in and not necessarily your intention yeah. or where, where you're going. Yes, Close left on B. Spike down B. One enemy oh, like, did that raise push him through the top? Last on A, he has a node in. Do we have all behind that raise? All behind the raise. I know exactly 50 on you know. site. Here we just dip. Because all's going off. And I think the raise just got sprayed through smoke. Yeah. yeah she, if she, she probably yeah, should have just been running. Close left off B. Spike down B. One enemy Hypothetically, if she did continue, push, not... would you have pushed behind her? If she, if she won? Hypothetically, if she did continue pushing, would you have pushed behind her? Mm, I mean, it's kind of a 50-50. You could push with your raise, but you could also push you for Sova. So either one is pretty viable. So yeah, I won't say that, that one is better than the other. I think you have multiple options to go with. I know exactly. Fifty on Cypher, please. Enemy remaining. Last one on A. He has an Odin. Yeah, I remember this round. This was a rough one. So I like this idea that you're staying lane. You don't necessarily have to be sight with your killjoy because the site is already cleared. She just needs to plant the bomb and then set up her mollies and then look to position for post plant. Whereas you can potentially gain information or cut off a rotation from the cipher. So, for example, you could play lane, watch market, and make sure, again, make really sure that you don't commit to a gunfight. You're just there just to get information and then maybe punish him if he, like, doesn't clear this angle or isolate this angle correctly, if he wide swings or whatever, whatever. Yeah, I think originally I was thinking playing here is kind of like an off angle because you probably wouldn't expect it, <clears throat> but... Yeah. Probably the best off angle to play if you have the time to get there is to go to garage. And then yeah, from yeah, garage main. Yeah, from, from B main. Yep. And then if he tries to run to a lane or if he tries to run to a B stairs, like you cut off that rotation. Yep. What's your thought about spending a TP in the logs here? In the logs. So like directly in front of us? Is that what you mean? That oh. little cut there. What's what's your thought on spending a TP into that? It's too risky. Right. It's you can't get out of there. Yeah, you can't get out exactly. At yeah, least with might, lane, might. you can like you can peek him. You take a couple shots. You fall back from garage. You peek him. You take a couple, couple shots. You fall back. Or you hide in the cover. You TP on the side. Whatever. So hypothetically, you peek market here. Would you pixel? Would you, would you like pixel peek this, or would you like um? Hold for the wide swing. Let me go and discuss different angles that we can take. <clears throat> so, so we are B. Killjoy is on site, playing the bomb. We are Omen on lane, and Cypher was somewhere in CT spawn. He's somewhere here. He could go here. He could go market. We don't know yet. Okay, so we're saying that one option is to play logs, and... I would probably only do this if Killjoy was playing stairs and if you guys were quoted enough, like cool enough that, that she doesn't peek too early and that um, you know that the Cypher is not going CT spawn because if she if he goes CT spawn then he's gonna fight this Killjoy first before he can actually fight you. So this position is much better if he's coming through markets and then you get this really strong off angle. That would be like ideal, but there's too many things that have to go like perfectly for that to happen, and it's like kind of high risk because like if you don't actually get the kill, then you're kind of dead. You're stuck. There's no way for you to get out. So one option is you play lane, you peek passively into market. Another option is you play garage, and you passively cut off rotation like this. Yep, I like that second one. I didn't think about that. The second one too. I feel like I feel like the lane option gets like pre-fired too much. Yeah. So 
if I'm, let's say um, I'm coming from CT, I'm gonna come here, peek the stairs first, then I come to this side. Uh, let me see. I'll stand here, peek the stairs, okay? Then I come to the other side, so I haven't actually even entered into the area yet. Then I'll peek like uh, from here to here to um, part. I don't know, I'm not actually sure if you can actually see Mark. You probably can't, and you can't see here either. So you have to clear that later. But you can at least clear like you see this side of the boat. You clear this part of lane. You clear part of the logs. All right. Like now it comes time to enter. Now we have to look at sight a little bit. Then we enter some more, and then this is like another crossfire where someone could be here, somebody could be here, and somebody could be market. Right? Then we start pushing this so like, way, assuming that we our intention is to go lane, that we have to like check all these angles, right? More and more angles. And any time while we're checking, you could possibly swing out and and timing him. Right? Or yep. if he decides to immediately go directly to site and then you cut off the rotation very easily. In another scenario, if he doesn't go CT spawn, if he goes market, then if I was a market retaker, I would stand here, clear stairs, I would stand here, clear garage, or at least this part this part of garage. Right? In yeah. the meantime I'm also clearing lane. In the meantime, I'm also playing the rest of like this uh, switch. And then it comes time to push out, and then I have to deal with this crossfire. Where someone could be to my right, someone could be close left. And then I can drop down, and then I can decide to go CT or decide to go lane. In which case, both times, as soon as I drop down, that's your cue that you have an opportunity to timing and peek out. So assuming you're holding the main angle, where do you want your KJ to play? Uh, the, what do you mean by main angle? You mean like inside garage here? Like, uh, assuming you're holding the angle that, we, that we're talking about to cut off that rotation, where would you want your KJ to play? I would want to play probably here, or possibly, possibly lane, but it might be too far away. Because if we're in B main, like this is our angle, right? And the goal of KOJ is to find an intersection point off of that angle without accidentally peeking too early. So, for example, if um, if he comes from mid market, this is why lane is kind of iffy because if he comes from mid market and then clears whatever, whatever, and then doesn't actually intersect with, with Omen's line yet, but he drops down to logs, now this could be a wrong run with the Killjoy if Killjoy is lane. Right, so that's one possibility where, like, if you're landing... I, did, then, I yeah. think in this specific case, it's pr I have my flash, actually, in this one, so I think if that happened, I probably could have just flashed him. But, yeah. Yeah, but the question was, like, where should Killjoy play? Yeah. So, not necessarily on, like, you and, like, what you tell you have, but more so, like, where should Killjoy be for yep. the, the easiest possible uh, crossfire? Yep, makes sense. So... The easiest possible, safest crossfire will probably be here. And then, if we know for sure that Cypher is not CT spawn, like for example, if he, if you're standing in garage and he's made footsteps running to market, now you can tell Killjoy, hey, he's market. Then, because you're, you're closer, you'll you get that information before she does. Then she no longer has to play like this far back, where like she has to like swing out, where instead she can like play um, around this corner here. So that she can swing off this corner. Does that make sense? So if the cipher drops down, intersects at this line, or drops down, intersects at this line, or whatever, right? Killjoy can swing out and then force that to become a 2v1. Yep. Plan. Yeah. And worst comes to worst. Let's say like um, um, it's like a rain or whatever, and then you make first contact. You get instantly taps. Killjoy swings out. Rainer dismisses to I don't know dismisses to garage. Then Killjoy can always like fall back to sight, 
play the bomb, play Pulse Plant because she has Molly, so she can fall back to wherever, depending on where Rin ends up. She can do like a ring around the rosy around this area here, whatever, whatever. So yeah, I think that's also an important tidbit too, if you find yourself um, on an agent with like really strong Pulse Plant, that you don't necessarily have to focus, overly focus on your Pulse Plant game, and I think that's a lot of that's an issue with, with a lot of sentinels slash certain controller mains or more like agents with like specific lineups like Viper or Brim or Sova or I don't know even like Kyoja to some extent where like they think that oh I have these lineups or I have my setup let me just sit back site while my omen whatever is taking these duels and that's like an extremely passive thing to do instead you should just you should use this as a fallback plan instead of sitting back site Makes sense. Okay. Any more questions? Nope. Okay. So, let's see. We are... Let's go back to the video. Did not play this one well, though. Spoilers, I guess. Okay. So, we but choose to sit lane. Helpful. We choose to sit lane. This is fine. Just as long as we... I don't know about this flash. Because it's already smoked, right? Like, even yeah, it's... Out of sight, stay out of sight. It's already smoked. So unless you think that he's he has pushed to the smoke. Yeah, I'm not sure why he smoked it. I'm not sure if I thought I heard him. I mean, clearly he there. But... Okay, so now you hear him CT spawn. Or actually, maybe not. He was CT spawn and he ran, actually ran to market. It's really interesting. But yeah, you have to be like really careful not to overcommit. Not to like peek too wide. Your goal here is just to... Peak information. So basically, you want to like try to jiggle and shoot, be be able to shoot maximum one to two bullets. Yep. Whereas like after yeah. flash, and he probably I mean he he knows I guess yeah. he knew where I was playing if he saw my flash. Yeah, too, because so. he saw you. Like, he knows where you are. He knows your lane. And then just this peak here is just too wide. Well, like. This initial peak here is good, right? The be the beginning part is good if you if you keep yeah. it like this. My even this is not placed well though. Yeah. But then yeah. you make it really large, so you see the entire market, and now you start fighting this old market. Yep. Yeah, that was not good. So now Killjoy is kind of fucked because like. Does that passive he, back, I think. Yeah, she's a pass passive passive Killjoy. Last player stand. So she's overly focused on her, her setup here. Yeah, I guess I, I mean, if I saw the Killjoy is playing passive, maybe I should have gone to Bode. Like, I could have backed up too. I don't know. I, I think you should still gain information, because you can still gain information without dying if you do it correctly. Oh, and then back up after. And, yeah, and then yeah, back up afterward. Yep, yep, that's a really good point. But now Killjoy is, like, kind of stuck here, and then she's in a really bad spot, because it, it feels safe to be back site with your setup, but not against an Odin, where the Odin can just spam and you can die instantly. Like he's just gonna randomly spam back site and Kyoji could very well die. Actually, it's good to see how this plays out. The Cypher should just, just spam everything. The whole the whole site's spammable. There's, there's no even no point for humans to even keep this. Like he can spam through all the boxes in sight plus the back site, so there's there's no point for him him to even pick anything. There's also why so is so OP on on a scent B site. Yeah, at the end it was it was only three and a half seconds too. Like if Killjoy even popped a Molly before she died, we still would have had it. Yeah. Super close. But yeah, oh, that's a good one. I should have definitely just gotten the information. She did pop a Molly before she died, but she used the cough CT lane. No, uh, not the other one. Okay. Here we're kind of looking at nothing, looking at nothing. Like we smoke on the mid. The point of the smoke again is to isolate angles so that we don't have to look at bottom mid anymore. Now we only have to look at cat. But each time that we're peeking, our crosshair is nowhere near cat. Our crosshair is like on the smoke. Now it's between cat and yeah. the smoke. Cat and the smoke. I, yeah. I think I just always assume someone is going to push through the smoke anyways, but maybe I should not assume that. If that's the case, then why'd you go? Just, just stay top mid and keep your crosshair on the smoke. Yeah, true. That's a good point. Check, trying to check both angles is not a good idea. Let's push three. Oh, I, 
It's good if you're machine, and someone's too spawn. He's in the corner. Yeah, I didn't call it for my team. Let's though, see, what but... was your second smoke? Oh, you didn't have. You didn't buy one. Oh, okay, never mind. I didn't have money. Yeah. There. Enemy spotted. He's in the corner. <laughs> Got him. Our spike carrier is dead. Spike. Also, another thing too about the jiggles. I should probably mention is that typically you don't want to jiggle close because they'll yeah, see you first. Good. You typically only want to do that when you're trying to like shoulder peek an op, for example. Yep, that, because you, point. yeah, in that scenario, your goal is not necessarily to gain information. That scenario, your, your goal is to bait an op shot. But if your goal is to like gain information and play safe, then you should be further away from the corner. We're all gonna push at the same time. Yep. Spike down A. Yeah, I ended up I mean, because there was the flag, I ended up taking too long and I didn't go help my team. I know exactly where you are. No, I'm not gonna win that. What after that I would've just TP'd? Sorry, what was that? What after that I would've just TP'd. So after the cipher all last player oh, fire just... standing. Okay. Second thing too is that you see those flash, they don't necessarily know where you are. Well, actually, they, they might because you kept you sprinted after this. Last player but standing. after shooting this eyeball here, they definitely know where you are. Instead, probably what you could have done is that you just hug the wall to your right until the, the flash dissipates. And then maybe you can catch the vein off guard. Instead of breaking it. Okay. Yeah, instead of breaking it. Second thing is that when Cypher does his ults, you can just like immediately TP. I mean, here you you, you kind of swing out because like I guess you're trying to I know exactly abuse the, the the pulse to throw off, just throws him off. Yeah, I had 30 health, so I mean, yeah. it's not a not a high percentage play. Wait, when you mean TP, yeah. you mean use my ability, use, use the alt, use or the alt. use you. Okay, okay. So they know where you are, but then you immediately TP somewhere else, or you could TP in place, and so that they think that oh, he could be CT spawn, okay. he could be mid, he could be wherever, right? So like. Yeah, I remember, like, so when I was playing the game, I think what I was thinking is, let me try to get a pick, so at least it becomes a 1v2, then I could run B, use my ult to grab the bomb and plant it. Yeah. I think I was thinking about that, but yeah, I mean, I could have also just TP'd to at least reset it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, all, that's actually a good point, too. So, like, because they have, um, because bomb's down, and because that they're in a 3v1 situation, and because that Cypher is ulting, you could probably ult the bomb immediately and pick up the bomb, because... Oh, when the cipher yeah, just goes go off, yeah. When the cipher when the cipher ulting, they're not necessarily looking at the bomb. They're more likely to be like aggressively pushing or looking through walls sure. to find out where the pulse happens. That's so, yeah. true. Yeah, I didn't have to wait. I was thinking I was gonna run to B then alt and plant, but I could have just grabbed the bomb and run to B afterwards. I don't need to do it. I don't need to get to the site first. That's a really good point. Yeah, it didn't work out anyways. But... Match point. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know, like, Got it. I, I don't know if the right play was to wait for the Reyna to flank, like, maybe she did the right thing maybe by going so slow, or, I mean, yeah. she was going through spawn, like, I could have, maybe I should have just gone to help my team. It's, it's kind of 50-50, because we, we don't know if the, the Reyna is just going like, to try to bait us out, because she kind of baited us there, and we don't know if our team is going to, like, lose the 4v4, well, more like, yep. it was more like a 4v2 or 3, and then they just eventually become a 4v4 that they lost. Yeah, I guess that's right, she's 50-50. So yeah, it's a 50-50 and not necessarily going to fault you on that. <clears throat> so far, we haven't used ult yet though, and I would really like, even last round, one thing you could have done for sure is that you could have like ulted to hell, or ulted heaven for example. Just throwing as an option, but like... Yeah, yeah. I don't think I use my ult this entire game. I mean, I sometimes, yeah, I don't feel like I use Omen ult very much, but yeah, yeah. I, 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 even just using it, I, I think I, I don't use it for information gathering. I think I should just do that because it's not that great of an ult. So yeah, even Omen ult's kind of kind of sucks, but at least you can use it like really offensively to entry semi entry with your team, so that oh, yeah. if, if someone's like on a site and they're defending this push right now, they either shoot you or they shoot your teammate. What you mean? Yeah, you know, that's like a great. I mean, yeah, maybe in, instead of waiting for the rain, I could have. Yeah, I could have done what you just said. Ulted onto somewhere aggressive on a like top of generator or heaven or something, and that probably would have helped us take the site, and they don't have to worry about the flank as much. I think even just just ult hell or okay. heaven, yep. so that uh, if you ult hell, for example, you clear out hell, or you spot someone, 
you ping it for them, ping your team, and then your team just like claps on them with yep. or without your your ult finishing. Yeah, it's a good point. <clears throat> so yeah, just going as an option. <clears throat> Spike down, B. Pushing your team is like really bad. Open here is like tilted. Yeah, I think everybody just, just fell apart there. Everybody just took a one one and lost. Yeah. Here looks like we're sending where we should be. Spike down, B. Everyone just dies. Yeah, I think I don't know. I mean. Some, I mean, I could have waited before I peeked there, but it's always, you never know what people are, if they're going to run or if they're going to shoot. Yeah. It was kind of lost before that, I think, but yeah. Yeah, I think your team was just kind of tilted after losing like six months in a row or whatever. Yeah, we we had a good first half. We just lost it. We just completely fell apart on attack, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so let's go look at the notes that we took. All right. So, the major things I've seen so far is that you seem to make the right decisions, but the biggest issue is that you're too slow to make them. So whether it's like you decide to um, push to mid, or decide to rotate, or decide to smoke somewhere, like there's several rounds on, on defense, for example, where you decide to smoke parts of mid to help the team take mid control, but then you sit cat. And then finally, 10, 20, 30, or 20 seconds later, then you decide yep. to push to mid, yeah. but then by then your smoke has dissipated, for example, or your top smoke has dissipated. So now now it becomes harder to like actually take mid control. Now you have to, actually do have to watch top mid, whereas before you could have just like gone mid, take mid control. And this ties into like bullet point number two, like there's many rounds that you, you or your team has mid control and you don't really take advantage of it. So for ascent, for example, like mid control is like really, really important. Where okay. like having control of mid cuts off rotations, gains like a significant amount of information for your team, and also at the same time makes it really fast for your team, or much faster for your team to rotate. Yeah, and when you say like use map control, <clears throat> do you like if I get a smoke and then I like? Is it really just about taking up space, like just putting my body in places or off angles so that if they choose to do, if they try to retake it, I might just get a free kill? Yes. Is that the way to think about it? Okay. Not, well, not just for a free kill, but let's go to a map so, to, to better illustrate this. So why make, yeah, why make control is so important on this end, especially as a defender. So we're at Omen here, we're on cats, and then for whatever reason, we decide to, well, we find ourselves really taking mid like we have the option to go top mid we also have the option to go tiles or to some extent right we could like push through here and like maybe we find someone in tiles whatever or we can play a bit safer but still have mid control and for example we play here we play well not, or not really by refrigerator but like say we play here we watch this watch this or we play here and then we look this direction, but we hear stuff, yep. hear stuff on top mid, right? Or we want to be really aggressive. We just completely push through top mid, like two, two or three rounds that you raise, um, not necessarily push through mid, but she pushed the lobby all the way to T spawn, right? And then like you can, like if the enemy team is like all in B lobby, you get this like huge flank on them. They're not really expecting like a, like a T spawn push. They're more expecting like people to be. Uh, all over like B or market or whatever or they're expecting someone to be like bottom mid like this is where I would expect as an attacker where I expect someone on cats I'm not really expecting someone close mid yep. close mid yep. close mid top close top mid right all these random spots or I'm not expecting if you had some long range weapon like a guardian vandal operator whatever sitting catwalk looking directly into B lobby right cutting off rotations but like now, if I'm be inside B lobby, I, I, I can't be in this this box here. Which is huge, yeah. Through this. I, I can't be in this huge rectangle. So I can't even consider tiles unless I want to challenge this operator, if you had one, or whatever language weapon. I have to commit to a garage push. 
or I have to commit to a rotation of the T-spawn. Right? And then because we have mid control, if we sat here, we would hear any rotation happening here. If we sat top mid, we would hear any rotation happening here. Any T-spawn rotation by sitting here and here, you would know it instantly. Unless they decide to, to walk, which in order to walk from B lobby, and say, oh, I'm B lobby, and I don't want to contest the people mid because, because there's so many angles I have to check mid, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, possibly 9 if you have yep. a hop or something. Like, there's so many angles to check. And no longer am, am I able to just like, smoke bottom mid and smoke cat and get mid control. Now I still have like 5 more angles to check. So say if I'm B, um, my team, whatever, is B lobby, and for the reason, because of that, I don't want to contest mid. Now I want to make this long rotation to T-spawn, and then now it's going to take me, um, I don't know, like 20, 30 seconds off the clock just to like yep. to Doesn't walk rotate. through here, right? In the meantime, or, if, or if, if you decide to full stop and, okay, it takes you 15 seconds to go, to go from B lobby to A lobby to, to, do, to do an A head, then you just with you saying saying mid say hey i hear two three four people rotating to t-spawn going a the people at b can immediately rotate over yep. and now we, we hold tree we hold cat we hold heaven whatever whatever we close the door we break the door whatever we throw a smoke here we slow them down some more right so mid control is like really important because of how how important the map like how important map control is or how important mid control is for cutting down these rotations, gaining information, and then denying information. So. Yeah, especially on this map, but I mean, I'm sure like in general, like, yeah, I think that, yeah, the thing I don't think I think enough about is it's not just, it's not just the angle you're holding, but you also have like the radius of sound that you can hear. And if you're mid, you can hear sound in a lot of the really important places too. Right, exactly. That makes a lot of sense. So yeah, you accomplish so much by gaining map control, or well, ga gaining mid controls specifically, and abusing it. So if, for example, you have mid control, you have full control of mid, and you're still sitting in, in cat, this is a complete waste. Because you're not gaining any information if they're going T-spawn to A, you're not gaining information if they're going T-spawn to B, you're not gaining information if they're B lobby and then going tiles, or going to garage, or whatever, and you're not like forcing them to deal with this angle, this angle, this angle, like, or at least, uh, like, multiple angles in mid that they cannot smoke off like, with just one smoke. Yep. Right, yeah. So when people yeah. take mid, usually it's like mid smoke and a cat smoke, and that's it. But you're still here, you're still here, you're still here. Possibly with two people, maybe it raises. Maybe it'll not raise the. Yeah, they have the, to use a lot jet. more resources to retake it later. Yeah. If I have it first, yeah. Like the pistol, for example, your jet could play here, you could play here, and then just you two alone crossfiring this <clears throat> would easily get like two, three kills minimum if they yep. decide to push through mid like this or push yep. through tiles like yeah. this. So yeah, uh, that makes sure. a ton of sense. Yeah, that's, that's something I should think about more. And I think just <clears throat> yeah, I think just trying to be more aggressive. I mean, I'm sure I'll sometimes I'll be over aggressive, but like I should just. I think for me, it's always like, oh, should I push out? Let me just. But just forcing myself to take the space up is something I think I can work on a lot, and that should yeah. help a lot. Yeah. So yeah, if you find yourself as the the cat player, then <clears throat> typically it's your job to help contest mid as much as possible, help control mid as much as possible. Yep. There's another thing too that's really strong in Ascent, so that if the attackers gain control mid, now they can do a split from A through, and also cat. And send this A, I don't know, three cat, two A main or something. And then yeah, no, whoever is defending A is like going to be hit from multiple angles. Likewise, yeah, if really they hard. go garage or if they go mid to B. So yeah, we fought mid control because it becomes really easy to get sandwiched. And uh see what else. That's uh, your job as cat. It's your job to listen to stuff happening in main. That's a noble point I put, I'll talk about that later. It's your job to to listen to anything about happening in main. It's your job to help contest mid. So say you have someone bottom mid, your jet, whatever, 
she peaks, she makes contact with someone who is, I don't know, right here, top mid. You want to be able to swing out and double peak. Or, or if they're top mid, they start dropping down, find yourself himself inside here. And then, I don't know, maybe she's playing pizza or something. She peeks out, finds herself in a win one. Then you also want to come out and try to hoist this to be a 2v1. Yeah, I feel like the two things I should probably try to work most consciously on, I mean, one is just being more aggressive about taking up space on the map, especially in mid, but the other is playing off my teammates more. Yeah. And just, um, it again, it doesn't have to be communicated verbally, but just what they're doing. Just look at the minimap more, see what they're doing, and playing around that. Yeah. 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 I'm always, I mean, like, the thing I always wonder is, like, do I need to spend time, I, like, I don't spend any time aim training, or, I mean, I, I like deathmatch maybe once before a match, that's about it, but I, I do feel like, I mean, aim training will help, but I think more of it is just more basic decision making that makes a lot more of a difference. Yeah. So I think, um, not necessarily that your, your aim is bad, and I think most of the time you, you do is like 50 50, so that's good, and, you didn't really lose that many duels, but like you lost just because of your aim. So I think yep. Yep. probably the biggest takeaway would just be focusing on map control and the bigger picture of the game and the flow of the game, or well, the pace of the match, rather. Yep, that makes sense. Just both my teammates and my enemies and how they play and what they're doing and playing around that. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing, too, about, again, all wraps around to mid control and map control is that when you have control of mid, and you know that there's going to be an A hit, you can tell your B players that, you can, hey, rotate through mid, and it becomes a much faster rotation faster. Yep. to go to A. Yep. And also opens up more opportunities too, because like a couple of rounds you had opportunity, you know that for sure, uh, let me be clear, you were inside cubby, and then you hear a ton of footsteps aiming, then because you more or less have mid control because you heard at least four people there. Maybe a fifth person could be looking is very unlikely. Maybe a fifth person stopping is very unlikely. But like that kind of, let's say if that person was looking, that's the type of one that you want to take. That's a 50-50 with like a high reward where yep. you gain you gain mid control and you gain a possibility of taking a big flank. Yep. Or if you don't find anyone, then you have a free opportunity to take a big flank. Yep. I mean, that's because you have Mid control. Yeah. And you can probably run on that flank, right? If they're if they're hard pushing a main. Yeah. Uh it would depend. So if they're if they're in A lobby and then you start running on this portion, you. they'll hear this, which makes a different sound compared to this. Yep. yep. Or actually I'm not even sure. This probably maybe like this part makes a, a different sound. I'm not sure where the cutoff is. But definitely yeah, before like, it turns into like tree garden, yeah. yeah. This push in here is is a distinctive metal sound. Yep. So it's much better to like to get up to this catwalk or start pushing up aggressively once you know that they're in A main and they're they're less likely to hear you. And they're if I'm in A main, I'm more focused on droning the site, darting here, doing like uh, getting the orb, listening for tree. Doing my smokes on door and heaven or whatever. Then I am like listening to things happening on mid. But if I'm a lobby, then I'm immediately gonna hear what's to my left. <clears throat> so yeah, timing is is a, is a factor too. That you wanna you wanna time your push based on where you think the enemy is. If they're in a lobby versus a main. Yep. And that, uh, yeah, it can be even just based on where I hear them. Like, if I hear them rushing down A main, then I can rush the other way. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, it's a good point. I don't, it goes back to how many how many of them there are, all those things. Yeah, but no, it makes sense. I mean, it's something I never do that. So it's it's even just worth doing as a mix-up once in a while, just yeah. to make the enemy team have to respect it, if nothing else. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So let's look at the bullet points. Use your smokes to help box enemies in. There's several rounds where we know that they're all trapped in around B area, and we can use our smokes like immediately to close this off, to let to funnel them toward mid, funnel them back to T spawn. We smoke this off to funnel them to B main, or funnel them back to T spawn. 
So usual yep. smokes to isolate angles, but also to box the enemy in. Also, yep. even if you don't have smokes, think about ways to box the enemy in. And this again ties into like map control. If you have map control, you should use it and abuse it. And like abuse the fact that there's nobody in a lobby and there's nobody in T spawn and there's nobody in mid. Therefore, you can occupy a lobby. You can occupy T spawn. You can occupy. You you could be positioned in mid. Okay, what else? Uh, you smoke some up boxing in. Calm things for your team. This is especially if if you are playing uh, playing cats because you are in this distinctive position have where more, yeah, yeah you have full volume of what's happening a lobby and full volume of what's happening a main. Yep. That if there's any sort of like full sprints executes happening, you would be able to count exactly almost almost exactly how many people are pushing. Compared to, let's say, for example, if you were uh, a mid player and you were like, you want your pizza or your market, or, like, you can't hear anything. The only thing you can rely on is just your, your peaks. What you see. Yeah, yeah what you see, further. exactly. So, yeah, because you're playing cat very often, then it's really important that you have good comms and good ears to help your team in that way. Yeah. Yeah, I just need to remember to calm those things more. Just something to keep doing. Yeah. Okay, so coming, consider looking more when you hear three, four enemies pushing on sites. So this is an example, like they, you hear three, four people pushing down A, I'll consider look, pushing mid and then looking behind them. Let's see, look for opportunities to flash for your team. Okay, so there's sub, a couple opportunities where like, you find yourself in mid, let's say you were uh, like, by your refrigerator mid, like right side, and then you have the opportunity to flash through B main. Likewise, there's a couple of times that you, have, you were sitting in, in cubby you have the opportunity to flash through a main so try to coordinate that as much as possible that's like really strong for omen basically only omen and breach can do it to some extent and to some extent Raina, and to some extent like breach flashes but mostly like just like this flash like travels so far in a rectangle this flash travels so far in a rectangle just like breaches um fault line or whatever yep so yeah set that up as much as possible like these are two perfect opportunities if you know that they're if they're in garage or then yep. a main or a main or b main then you can basically flash almost the entirety of it for your team and they, they can rush right in everyone's blind they can rush right in everyone's blind let's see what's so yeah flash for your team look for opportunities look for opportunities to gain information your team this ties into map control again. This also ties into yep. playing cat. Yeah. 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 And I think even just like, I think that the note that I was, as we were going through, I made a note for myself around like that, that 1v2 re against the Cypher where I was playing lane, but then I peeked too wide. And I think I, I should have in my head said, my goal is to get information that's not to take a fight. So I should have been peeking much more tightly. Yeah. So even just I'm like thinking about when do I want to actually peek to take a fight versus peek just for information to fall back. Yeah. I think overall your your concept of angles is good and your ideas of when to like how to hold an angle, whether you should hold it committed versus non committed. But just maybe sometimes you, you make the wrong decision, but then yep. you do realize it after the fact. So that's good. So then probably just Play more and try to minimize those mistakes and you'll you'll probably climb a lot faster yeah i think my yeah i mean i i'm trying to my main thing is just trying to find even more time to play like just play like two or three games a day which i can do most days but just being able to do that more and just keep thinking about this stuff is probably the way to go yeah so cool well this is super helpful i mean, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to go through this game yeah no problem uh, and uh, so I'll send these notes to you. I'll also send them recording to you. And uh, if there's no more questions, I guess I'll stop recording. Yeah, I don't think I have any more questions. Thanks a ton. I really appreciate it. Super helpful. All right.